Flint water here. Right? <laughs> well, it's probably Detroit City water. Yeah, but this is. Yeah, the common stuff, right? Oh, yeah. The riot. Thank 
Okay, we're getting close to the time. The time is 10.38. Credentials is wrapping up the report. In a moment, we are going to get started. You can't hear? It's so loud in my ear. We can hear. Maybe everybody, everybody should. And I'm not saying the call to order at this time. I'm just letting you guys know it's coming very soon. There's a chair here. There's two chairs here. There's a tight chair here. So anybody that wants to grab a chair, please do. But let's uh, prepare to begin. Convention of the Libertarian Party of Michigan. Um, in light of recent events in the party, it is my view that it is in the best interest of the party and also for consideration of the fact that I wish to participate in debate and make motions from the floor today that I'll be handing off the chairship for today's convention to my vice chair, Leah Daly. guys we're going to just try to get through uh, our business and um, for those of you who have the agenda in front of you the next um, the next order of business will be the chair's report so Andrew if you want to grab the mic from the floor please we'll hear the chair's report at this time It's just going to have to be right next to you, okay? have enough chairs. All right. Is this working? Yep. All right. Fellow members of the Libertarian Party of Michigan, 
Um, I'm speaking from the chair of the department, which is included in everybody's convention packets. It's been approximately eight months since our last gathering to conduct party business, and in this time, the Libertarian Party of Michigan has remained steadfast in our commitment to both traditional party functions and forward-thinking strategies aimed at bolstering our candidate's success. Today, I'm filled with excitement to reunite with all of you, my fellow Libertarians in person. Our shared vision of a world set free within our lifetimes serves as the cornerstone of my passion for our party. Many of you know that I'm someone who wears the heart on the sleeve, and occasionally my emotions get the better of me. I want to assure everyone that it is this fervent passion for our party and its legacy that drives any emotional reactions that you have witnessed from me in the past. Despite facing personal attacks on both myself and my character from social media trolls, I remain steadfast in my commitment to this cause, understanding that when one lacks a substantive argument, they resort to personal attacks and that becomes the norm. I'm thrilled to announce our delegation's participation in the Libertarian Party National Convention in Washington, D.C. It's a tremendous honor to lead this delegation and to represent the Libertarian Party of Michigan on such a significant stage. Since assuming the role of chair on July 15, 2023, I must acknowledge that achieving our party's goals has been a formidable challenge marked by significant resistance and unforeseen obstacles. As many of you are aware, there was a recent attempt to steal our party's bank accounts, resulting in our assets being Buy frozen you. and inaccessible. Regret regrettably, these funds remain tied up in legal proceedings. Despite this setback, we've successfully reestablished new accounts and have been diligently collecting donations and membership fees over the past several months. Illegally. However, reaching this point proved more arduous than anticipated as passports neglected to update IRS records since 2008. <clears throat> These simple tasks required countless hours on the phone with my least favorite government agency, the IRS. As of today, our newly established bank account holds $7,350, and a detailed report on these accounts will be provided today. Navigating through administrative hurdles has been a persistent challenge. Many bills were still tied to the Lansing PO Box, which has been defunct for years. Many members were receiving bills of personal addresses on behalf of the party. Additional, some of our online accounts and assets were made inaccessible because of non-compliance and withholding by members through things such as multi-factor authentication. And then we had other accounts that were set up using non-party email addresses. Despite these challenges, the Libertarian Party of Michigan has achieved notable successes in recent, recent months. These include establishing of a candidate resources page, access to voter gravity, new member onboarding meetings, the revival of the Legislative Committee, revival of our month monthly newsletter, a robust resolution on trans rights, a new Rumble page to host video content from the party, and an expanded social media presence. We have had robust membership growth, including eight new lifetime members since July, leading to a current total of 286 members. As we continue our journey, I urge those willing to support the party's goals to consider volunteering time or making a donation. Currently, the Summer Convention Planning Committee, the Candidate Committee, and the Legislative Committee are all seeking qualified assistance. In conclusion, despite the challenges the party has faced, the Libertarian Party of Michigan remains resolute in our commitment to advancing liberty and individual freedoms. Together, let us strive for a world where every individual can live free from undue government intervention. Yours in liberty, Andrew Chet. Thank you for that. Next, we do have a treasure report that is going to be given by our Vice Chair 2, Mr. Trevor Sepp. You want to come up and give the report, please? All right, everyone. So if you have a copy of the packet, um, you can find this uh, in there, or uh, there's the PDF, which is linked on the convention website. So we broke it down into two sections for you guys there. You'll see July 1st to December 31st of 2023, um, and that's with that starting balance of zero, showing the, you know, we didn't have access to any funds at that time. Uh, so you'll see uh, just over $2,000, $2,444 were raised in uh, 2023 from July to December 31st. Uh, that was mainly through two avenues. You'll see the convention income, which was uh, $687. That was from Pink Conning. 
and you'll see the memberships of $842. Um, there's some other miscellaneous items, some donations. Um, you'll see that uh, noted in your packet if you want to take a look at that. Um, and then you'll see uh, over what the expenses, some of the things that we did spend some money on, uh, mainly an insurance uh, policy, PO box, and our email and uh, website hosting services, or that's actually just, just the email. Um, If, if you uh, look at the next page from January 1st to February 29th, um, mainly when you look at that, you'll see the income from just memberships mainly um, and the convention sales. So as of uh, February 29th, we were at 32.44 for uh, convention registrations uh, for today. Um, and you can see it's just some of the other um, expenses. Uh, there's going to be quite a few other expenses adding on in March here for the convention, but you'll see 910 uh, were spent uh, previously uh, before March 1st. Um, the yeah, annual you'll see as of uh, February 29th, that bank account was sitting at $6,846. Um, and the chair had a little bit more updated number uh, in his report. Um, so that is going to conclude the uh, treasurer's report for today. Good morning. Great to see a big crowd here and a lot of engaged people. After a bit of a tumultuous year, let's say. So I guess the main point of this graph, you can see the membership uh, was kind of steady, but not really growing. Um, and then it appeared from June to December, we had the scenario where we had to basically sub members through submissions to HQ Legal. And that was the only way we could kind of accept members because of the dispute over the assets of the Libertarian Party of Michigan, as we all know about. So, you could see in that time period, obviously, flatland went low. Um, but I guess as membership committee chair, I could characterize our problem is really lack of renewals and lack of renewals for whatever reason. I think we know the reasons. I don't want to spell it out. But the bottom line is, if we don't get the renewals, um, we're not going to grow the party. We are getting new members, but the renewals are a problem. So. Um, I encourage ex-members to renew and join the party. I mean, we're trying to get this together. We've got a lot of external enemies. We have to try to unify internally. That's, I guess, my crux of my message here. But anyways, we had 356 at the start of the year, ended with 276 at the end of the year. I'm sorry, it's 345 at the uh, start of the year, 276. But we did have a bump up uh, in February, so that's good. And then, of course, with this convention, there's been a lot of renewals and registrations in the last week. So the memberships should start looking up. Um, the other point I want to make about membership is that we do have a lot of life members. And in fact, one just joined today by the name of Colin Fitzgerald, new life member. <laughs> we also have another new life member in the house, Jerome Schwab in the corner. Help us out. Good. Um, there's a couple other new members in the past few months here. Uh, one out of state, in fact. Uh, Carl Ball is a new life member, and Kevin Ellis. They're not here today, but oh, Carl's here. Great. Okay. I didn't see him. Anyways, Carl, I have your lifetime pin. Thank you. All right. Here it is. Pin it on. Awesome. Yeah, 
script that are here, or is it just remarkably similar to that? Too? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, folks. <laughs> Okay, so the other thing I want to count on membership committee, we are we do a lot of membership committee. The membership cards you get, the lifetime membership, the hard cards, Carl and uh, Jerome, you have yours, Carl, you get yours shortly. Um, the monthly membership statistics, which I've been doing for you know four years now. Um, event participants, credentialing, address labels, calling new members. Um, thanks to Leah Daly for calling new members. Thanks. 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 Appreciate all the hard work from the credentials committee. Okay. We're going to move on to Mr. Chatterman. Um, in light of information that's recently come to the attention of the state party, I would wish to motion to amend the credentialing report to omit the delegation from Macomb County for the fact that they did not follow proper procedure in conducting their nomination. Second. Okay, so as I understand, this is a challenge to the Macomb slate of delegates. The motion's been made and seconded. At this time, can we hear some discussion about this challenge? Uh, anybody that would like to speak on it? Can, in favor of my motion? Since you made the motion, please speak first. Yes, so it recently came to the attention of the state party through the through the efforts of the affiliate director, as well as multiple members of the Macomb affiliate, that in the organization of their convention I'm for nominating delegates. Some of the people in the back can't hear. It's loud here, but it's yes. not loud back there. In light of information that came to the attention of the state party, on behalf of the affiliate director and multiple members of the Macomb affiliate, it has come to the attention that the Macomb Libertarian Party did not send the notice at any time of the location of their convention. Location is a required element of notice for a convention, and a convention cannot occur if the notice is not given. The, or the affiliate leadership did not send that notice out at any time, despite multiple attempts to request that information, occurring on January 22nd, February 3rd, February 10th, and not until February 12th did they give the information to anyone. The arguments have been made that this is not a significant issue because those who sought to be nominated got nominated. However, that, that assertion is based on flawed logic. The state party cannot know in reality who wished to be a delegate because the affiliates did not send out notice to notify people of their right to be a delegate. That is a required element and it's a matter to protect the rights of absentees Conducting a convention without doing so makes that convention and all the business that occurred within it invalid. So, because the affiliate conducted its convention invalidly, it is a violation of the state party bylaws to, to credential that delegation. If this body chooses to do so against that fact, this body will be jeopardizing the validity of business conducted today. <laughs> Cycle, okay, cycle. Um, if anybody else would like to lights. speak on this motion, please approach the microphone and you'll be Point of information. Point of information. Yes, sir. I, I have a, a request from the last speaker. Can you cite which part of the bylaws it's in violation of, the state bylaws? This is part of the requirements for notice of Just Robert the specific Lewis, section, section was my question. Three as well as section 23-6, I want to say E, regarding the rights Can of Can you read the citation, please? I provided the citation. You're welcome to reference that if you wish. Credentials approved them unanimously. And at this time, I just want to do a quick reminder that um, any points of order, points of information, if you can please come to the microphone. To That's not going to happen. The room's too crowded. Mr. Fulmer? Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, my name is Jim Fulner from uh, Armada, Michigan. I am the um, servant secretary of the Libertarians of Macomb County. Under the LMC bylaws, it is my responsibility to communicate to our membership 
or my designee thereof. Um, I understand there's some concern that um, there was some shady business of us only telling our friends. And I've been on the other side of that conversation for a long time. Those of you who've been here know that I'm normally in the minority, and I always think everybody's being shady. And this year, for once, I'm in the majority. How the hell I got stuck with Bill Jello on the same team, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I assure you, there was no intention at all to do so. In fact, um, the vice chairwoman knew the location before I knew the location. Uh, we lost our regular meeting place. We, um, I had been in communication with um, Lake Apple Orchard in my hometown of Armada. Uh, we had met there previously. We communicated back and forth, and then there was a, and the kids call it ghosting, by the local apple orchard. Um, Mike took his responsibilities um, and took days talking to people. Our regular meeting is always the, the uh, second Wednesday of the month. We wanted to keep it that way. That's what we said at the previous meeting, which happened to be Valentine's Day, which makes it difficult to get a room at uh, a restaurant like we normally do. The Credentials Committee already heard this complaint. The Credentials Committee specifically chose not to even move to strike our delegation. I hope that the delegates here will recognize that, will recognize that human error happens, and I'm really not trying to prove it very I promise. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fulmer. We have noticed that we do, this is not an uncommon problem for us to knock our emails out. At our last meeting, we're switching to free and open source software, which is way better than MailChimp. It's going to work. I promise. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bobo? I'd like to speak in favor of the uh, chair's, uh, what do we call this? Uh, the motion that motion. Andrew made. Um, anyway, uh, Mr. Fulner here in a group. I was a delegate to the National Convention in uh, 2016. I was a uh, uh, representative, U.S. Rep in District 8 against Warren Michael Mike Rogers in 2012, and then uh, Wayne State Board of Governors in 2014. Anyway, but uh, 2016, I was at I was I was at the uh, 2016 convention. And uh, Mr. Fulner here and a group of others uh, got uh, weeks and uh, uh, to uh, run for vice president. Who stripped the down in front of, uh, on the stage in front of uh, on, on CNN uh, national uh, 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 C span. So anyway, the thing is that this man cannot be trusted. So just take that into consideration here. Mr. Bowman? Yes. Uh, first, I, I'd like a point of um, a request for information followed by, or maybe it's a parliamentary inquiry, followed by a comment. Um, first, a point of parliamentary inquiry. Um, is this require a simple majority for Mr. Um, Sheridan's motion to pass, or does it require um, a larger number? Simple majority. This would be a majority vote, and the challenge delegates cannot participate in the vote. Uh, the, de the delegate slate that's been challenged, we would vote on... Um, Doesn't that beg the question? Can't vote on the Correct. Really? Yep. Bullshit. They are valid until the vote possibly happens, therefore they can vote. Okay, I'm going to make my comment first. My comment is the following. Uh, I oppose this motion for the clear, the whole reason our party has been in the dire situation it is in is that we have had a disconnect between results and the majority wishes of delegates. And as a result, we have this conflict that's been going on. I don't need to reiterate it for everybody in the time for that. But the point is, we are in this bad situation because of 
not having the will of the majority of delegates followed, therefore them feeling justifiably disenfranchised, therefore um, we have all the things that transpired afterward. This would just exacerbate that. If the chair's claim is that we would endanger the validity of our results, I would say that excluding this very large portion of the delegation would discredit the results of this convention more than anything else. And we continue to be pouring hot acid on the gaping wound that is sliced through the soul of this party. And the one way to prevent that from happening is to vote this thing down and let the people that the delegates have approved, um, I mean that the um, co Credentials Committee has approved, be um, enfranchised. <clears throat> Finally, I would like to challenge the um, ruling that this would be a simple majority because I believe this would actually be a suspension of rules which would require a super majority. And um, furthermore, that excluding people voting before they are excluded would actually beg the question. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Point of, I suppose, privilege from the secretary, um, since it wasn't noted earlier. Please ensure when you take up the mic, by the way, I'm Dan Zimba, your secretary <laughs> from Wayne County. I suppose I should follow my own role. Please announce your full name and uh, delegation which you are representing today in terms of your affiliate or unaffiliated region. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Jeffrey Patel. That's, okay. Okay, Mr. Patel. Okay, I have membership uh, committee chair, you know, and credential committee chair. Um, I'll just point yes. to credential like committee. Let's do that one, too. Louder. Uh, two weeks ago. Two meetings. Okay, so let me see the chronology. Um, by the way, I'm open to Wednesday That's night what is when I received notice. Occasion at 11 p.m. as the Macomb uh, delegation being challenged. Thursday was a credential committee meeting. I was able to, we had a quorum at credential committee for the committee. And that committee consists of uh, Larry Johnson, Rich McLean, Ryan Henry, Jeff Patel, and Jerome Schwab. Okay, that's a credential committee. We debated this. There was evidence presented at credentials committee by uh, Mr. Chatterton uh, on behalf of this motion and behalf of just excluding the Macomb County delegation. That evidence was presented by Mr. Chatterton. There was also um, the Macomb County delegation, so I was speaking on their behalf, and there was notification that they thought it was proper. At the end of the presentations, nobody in credentials committee agreed that we should move to strike the Macomb delegation. So the, the Macomb delegation, as far as the Credentials Committee is uh, concerned, is legitimate. Um, we don't question every affiliate's notification process. We know that there's email problems. We know, as I mentioned, a lot of people aren't getting our emails. A lot of people aren't getting our postcards. So I don't know if we were to, is this our standard, okay, who is notified? Anybody can complain they didn't get notified and invalidate uh, every affiliate. Because I know that every affiliate doesn't necessarily get notified. So let's end that excuse. We know it's not proper. Maybe it's to be approved in the future, but at this point in time, I advise the uh, by to vote against this. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Mr. Fulner? Uh, Madam Chairwoman, the, uh, I, my point of order is that I believe there was a motion on the floor from Mr. Bowman to overrule the ruling of the chair that the two-thirds majority was necessary. Are you ruling that that died due to lack of a second? I'm, I'm sorry, but it's going to be a majority, not two-thirds. Your, your ruling has been procedure. challenged. Do you not understand the procedure? Challenge to the decision of the chair. You have to hold the vote. Okay. I did make that challenge. One moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, as I understand it, this time a majority vote would be in order. According to challenge the ruling of the chair. Secretary? Um, from what I gather, Mr. Fulner, to answer your question, I did not hear the second immediately upon Scotty's motion, but I did hear it upon yours. So at present, the motion on the floor is a challenge of the ruling of the chair that a majority vote is the required threshold. I don't believe Mr. Bowman or, nor Mr. Fulner stated their preferred threshold. They simply challenged that. I that did. said go. super majority. I said two thirds. I meant okay. two thirds. Well, the, it's I, I said it was a suspension of the rule. Is there any objection to assuming that these two challenges assert that they wish two thirds to be the threshold? Does anyone object the, that that is what? Objection. objection. That's not what we're talking about. Point of order. Is that not what your challenge of the ruling of the chair was? I didn't have a challenge. I had a point of order. Or very well. My understanding is that, Mr. Bowman, please correct me if I'm wrong, your motion was a challenge to the ruling of the chair that she indicated there was a two-third majority necessary, and you don't believe that's the case. No, that she indicated the majority was necessary, and I believe this amounts to a suspension of the rule because the credential report was approved, was already presented to us, and... Well, and he's trying to um, there was no challenge There was no vote on the credentials committee. Correct. Well, it affects the question to exclude. There are actually two things. There's only one motion at the time. Okay. May I be recognized for a point of order? Sure. <laughs> the ruling of the chair in this matter is not a subjective analysis. And it's a basic part of fundamental parliamentary procedure oh. under our That's for the body party. to decide. The body That's for the body to decide. The, That's the challenge, Andrew. The body does the not have the right to, to vote by to any threshold to overturn what are plain as day is the letters of our bylaws. Point of order. <laughs> Please. Jim Fulner from uh, Macomb County. If I learned anything at the Reno Convention, it's that you can challenge the ruling of the chair for any reason, even if Jesus told me to. Here, here. One moment, please. Does anyone else find it interesting how much time certain elements spend trying to do, to eliminate voters you of this party? Sit down. I got a microphone. You shut, you shut up. You're a child. All right. Why are we trying to eliminate voters? Why can't the majority rule? Point of order. Yeah. I have a point of order. Connor and Pomicino, delegate from Oakland County. In order to address the body, you need to be recognized by the chair. Thank you. Yes, please. It's, it's a full room. I, I understand it's hard to get to the microphone, but please, if we could be civil. The chair told me to come to order. I'm going to come to order. Thank you. 
So why is the parliamentarian consulting with the chair with an ongoing suit in the state of Michigan against eight members? I don't know. Okay, thanks guys. The challenge is dilatory. We're going to do a majority vote. <coughs> Yes, and the by according to the bylaws, a majority vote during convention for this. Correct. Point of information. Point of information. Yes. Point of information. I will recognize Mr. Ellison because he's holding a child. Yes, sir. <laughs> Can you please read, not only cite the section of the bylaws that you claim it's in violation of, but please also read that section of the bylaws that states the process that you're referring to. We have a request for the bylaws to be read. We're going to look those up. At this time, I'll recognize Dr. Larson. I was going to speak of the prior motions. I was going to speak of the prior motions. I'm waiting at this point. Okay. So I'm waiting. Okay, Sec Article 6, Section 5, a majority shall rule at the convention except for the platform and resolutions of the party which shall require a two-thirds vote of those present or as otherwise required by these bylaws. Further point of information because that doesn't answer the whole question. So I would just like to clarify for a moment uh, regarding the if um the delegates that are on the slate that has been challenged from uh, 49 I'm sorry 5924 one moment No, I think I have it. Uh, halfway down, the language says, but no such amendment is permitted to include more names than those of a single challenged delegate or delegation, all of whom are challenged on the same grounds, together with any claimants involved. Those seated by the committee though contested in a case not yet reached, can vote on all cases except their own on the question of adopting the credentials committee report or on motions connected with its consideration. Only those persons whose names are on the list of voting members reported by the committee are entitled to vote. Does that clarify? No, no, it doesn't. That means everybody gets to vote. No, because we already, we picked up the vote on the overruling of the chair regardless of the current motion. On the question of adopting the yeah uh, the credentials committee report. Oh, right there, right there. Um, 
Mm. One moment, please. <laughs> On an amendment proposing changes in the list of delegates, none of the delegates involved in the case can vote. So just to clarify where this is coming from. Yep. So, so as such, uh, request for information, in my understanding that currently there is no motion on the floor. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Thank you. There is the motion on the floor um, um, to challenge that delegate list, and it will be by majority vote. I would like to make excluding those who are on the list. I would like to make a privileged motion to challenge the ruling of the chair that the previous challenge of the ruling of chair is dilatory. Thank you for that. It's not well taken. Um, any, let's go back to some discussion. Anybody else, Ms. Dr. Larson, did you want to speak about this motion about this challenge of the delegate slate? Whether or not it's dilatory is the current thing on the floor. I was going to speak to Mr. Chatterton, Chatterton's motion. Is that what we're discussing right now? Or were you discussing previously? I think we're doing well, that. Well, he, Mr. Fulner has ruled my challenge dilatory. It's not, that's not well taken. The body here has the right to choose whether or not his motion is dilatory. Okay, the chair has the right to to rule the motion dilatory. He said it first. Why do we have such a hard time letting the body decide? This is absurd. You know why. Withdraw the expulsion. No, no, no. What I would prefer. Yes. I would prefer that we move to a, a vote of this. One moment. <laughs> awesome. Oh my God. You can You can Okay, as I understand, the credentials report, we have not finished uh, with the credentials report, the voting of the credentials report. This was a motion during uh, the time of finishing the credentials report. So at this time, um, no other motions are going to be heard. Well, you have to say this one. Yeah, this is a privileged motion. Okay, because we haven't approved, we haven't approved the delegation at this time. 
So as I understand, we're not going to be hearing any other, any other motions until we have our delegate, um, our credentials, and our delegation in order. Yeah, you're not recognized. I will recognize Mr. Ellison. I move to table the amendment indefinitely. Second. 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 Third. Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's calling her over. See? Mm -hmm. totally <laughs> yeah, that is. She's calling her over. She's involved in the convention. Sure. Yeah, yes. we see. She keeps offering it. Yeah, that's not. We can't do that. Unrequested. It's our, we've already been in, in discussion of this motion. Which motion? You can table for a motion the, when it's been discussed. That's bullshit. For the um the I, it's been moved and seconded. Point of order. I believe the current motion on the floor was made to um, remove the convention chair. I believe that is the current motion on the floor. So what well, we had decided. Correct. The current motion being discussed is Andrew's amendment, which I just moved to table, and it was seconded in third and fourth and fifth. That's the current motion. We don't have to get table until you know who the Everybody can vote. Everybody can vote was on the, on the credentials list. So can he even amend? If we can't. Is that the best show vote? Just stop with the gamesmanship. Let the majority decide. I want you in the video. Are you watching the video? Yeah. Make sure that you're not watching. At this time, we're going to go to the vote. Uh, of, the, of the delegate slate from Macomb. <laughs> it's been it's been moved to be tabled. I challenge the ruling of the chair. I order that we take a vote on the original. That is what we are going to do. That is what we are going to do at this time. Challenge the ruling of the chair. I've been in line forever. I'd like to speak again. I motion to close the debate. <laughs> At this time, we're going to hold the vote regarding the delegate slate of Macomb. There will be majority vote. Out of order. I Out challenge order. the ruling of the chair that right. my order, that my motion to table was out of order. That's been seconded. That's for the body to decide, not you. Also, there are still people ready to speak. You can't do that. You can't call the question with speakers. Say draw the bullshit. Why are we spending so much trying time trying to silence the majority? Let the majority rule. <laughs> This time I'm trying not to get rolled over. Okay, so I have help here to make sure that it's not about you, it's about the body. The business, no but it's it's also about the business that we're conducting. It's about the that body. Needs to be the body that's assembled, assembled today. So, it turns out we cannot make uh, a motion to table this indefinitely because they, this is an amendment. Your, your ruling has been challenged, and it's now to the body to decide whether or not your ruling is correct. We can't keep doing this thing where we make a challenge, you go over there and then come back and ignore that we made a challenge. This is an end loop. Can we move to remove? Well, she's not in charge, sit around. She's advising. I withdraw my challenge. Move the prior question.
Thank you, Mr. Ellison. Uh, at this time, we'll resume some discussion about the motion and the amendment. Mm -hmm. Andrew. Correct. Oh, I move to call the question, though. I hear you. Ms. Carver? Dana Carver, straight to area. I was on the microphone when I said it. No, you're out of order. Okay. Shut the fuck up! All right. Okay. Hey, a lot of you think you're real tough. Nope. 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 Right. Miss Carver has. I recognize Dana Carver. Everybody, be quiet, please. Miss Carver. Okay. So. I would like to challenge this on the grounds of, first of all, this was not being brought by anyone from the Bone delegation. This is being brought by Andrew Chatterton, specifically to unseat people who are being sued by this party right now. And so they're trying to keep them from coming to this. This is one of our larger delegations. They're trying to keep them from having a voice in this party. And no one's ever said specifically what bylaw was violated by them, and there was notice. I was at the credentials meeting. I listened to it. I was there involved. And we have to remember, when we create these affiliates, we give them autonomy. And our bylaws are right here, and they say the autonomy of affiliate parties shall not be abridged by the executive committee or any other committee of the party. This body is a committee of the party, and they even do not have any say over what happens to the affiliates. They are autonomous. They have their own rights. The only thing we could do is disaffiliate them if they've done something egregiously wrong and there's trials and all kinds of other things that are supposed to happen. But no, we can't vote on this. This is the autonomy of the affiliates. What's the purpose of having affiliates if we're going to violate their rights? This is a violation of members' rights. These people were legitimately made delegates by their affiliate. The Credentials Committee has already weighed in on this during a meeting and today this is this whole thing is dilatory. This whole thing is a vendetta against people, and it needs to stop. We need to unify this party and be done with this mess. Thank you, Ms. Carver. Yes. Thank you. It has, one moment, please. It has been brought to my attention that Mr. Ellison, in fact, did call the question. And that was seconded. So at this time, So we're going to vote whether or not to close debate. Thank you, Mr. Fulner. Uh, majority vote to call the question and get to get to the next vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Okay. At this time, we will proceed to go to majority vote regarding the delegate slate from Macomb. Those who are um, on that delegate list. Will not vote at this time? That's a total of nine. Total of nine. So we're going to do it like this. All in favor of Mr. Chatterton's may you motion. Repeat, may you repeat the motion. Mr. Secretary, can you repeat the motion, please? All right. The motion as I recorded it. Louder. <laughs> The motion, as I've recorded it, will be a motion to amend the Credentials Committee report to challenge the Macomb County Affiliate Delegation due to improper notice of their affiliate convention. Right. Yes, yes, and that would result in striking the delegation. So a vote for yes would strike the Macomb Delegation from the Credentials Committee report. A vote of no would keep them on the report. Okay. Right, so at, at this time, a vote of yes, as everybody heard, a vote of yes is in favor to strike those delegates from the delegation. A vote of no is to leave them be. One moment. So at this time, all in favor, of Mr. Chatter Chatterton's motion, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Aye. But some people did vote that weren't supposed to, but overwhelmingly nay. Yay. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Now we need to um, 
adopt or uh, we need to vote on our delegates list from the credentials report to adopt it. A credentials so moved. report. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor of the credentials report that was given? Please please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Please say nay. Okay, thank you. Our delegates are um, okay. yeah, I move to dismiss Karen Ann Carlos as parliamentarian. Second. Second. So, as I understand, it is the, without being a recognized speaker also, but it is the discretion of the chair to have a parliamentarian. Appeal the ruling of the chair. This isn't my ruling. This is, this is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry? Your job is to make a ruling. So my ruling would be that I have a parliamentarian I present, which is Karen Ann. Then I, have, then I appeal your ruling. Okay, one moment. <laughs> Mr. King from here on Raisin. Okay, guys. I accept Mark's motion to remove the comment Thank you. Okay. I move to re remove Karen, Karen Ann Harlow as parliamentarian of this body. Okay. Any other discussion on that matter? I will speak to it. It is entirely inappropriate for her as parliamentarian to be pulling the chair aside to discuss with her. Under no circumstances should she be able to do that. It is even in Robert's rule. Thank you for the comment. Point of order. Mr. Chatterton. The statements made by the previous speaker are false. Under Robert's, which is our governing documents, the parliamentarian is selected at the sole discretion of the chair. It is not up for consideration by the body. The chair chooses an advisor, and they are serving in an advisory capacity only to the chair. Yep, he's just giving some information. Mr. Fulner? Uh, 
Jim Fulner from our, uh, Macomb County. Uh, I, I rise in favor of this motion. Um, Mrs. Harlos has been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't been the case the last few years. Regardless, I believe it's inappropriate for her to serve as parliamentarian to this board for a number of reasons, not the least of which is she is a member of an organization that is currently actively suing eight members of this body. Eight members of the Libertarian Party. Okay. Thank you. Jim Fulner said a lot, Dana Carter, straight to you. Jim Fulner said a lot of what I was going to say, but I would like to further um, speak on the conflict of interest. Not only is Mrs. Harlos a member of the National Party that is suing eight of our members, but she is also on a special committee called the Litigation Committee, which is in charge of writing the litigation for the lawsuit, which makes it an even larger conflict of interest for her to be involved in anything involving Michigan until this lawsuit is done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Freeborn Hall? It's not on, I don't think. Uh, Alice Freeborn Hall, a district representative, uh, Bay City Delegates. Uh, I'd like to speak against this motion on the basis that I feel that this motion is nothing more than a waste of time and uh, us continuing to introduce motions against other people because we simply disagree with their rulings or disagree with them as a person is a waste of time and continuing to do so is going to keep us here past 10 o'clock, which uh, sorry, past 8 o'clock, which is our scheduled uh, end time and would, uh, would encourage the body to Vote not only against this motion, but continue to move towards uh, our agenda. Thank you. Time. Thank you. Also, I just want to say um, it is the chair's discretion. We've decided that she's she's not going to advise me anymore today. Okay. I don't want to shun anybody. Yes. <laughs> so because it's the uh, he made the motion, it's the chair's discretion to have or not have the parliamentarian. I decided to honor this motion and not have her as my parliamentarian at this time. So there's really no need to discuss further. Right. Remove no. her as the parliamentarian. No, that's not how it works. You still have to call this. You can't withdraw all those. Well, I'm not going to consult her at this time. We just said that. that there's, a remove motion, her. there's a motion on the floor. As I understand, we were your chair's discussion to have a parliamentarian on. Thank you. So, second. I need a second. Need a second. From what I understand, you need to bring a second. No, you don't. You don't get to put a motion. Never made. You don't get to put a motion. So, so let's. That was the question was called. Yeah. The question was called. We'll go ahead and vote on it. Okay. What are we voting on? Removing, removing the parliamentarian. So the, the question was called, at this time... Point of information. Who called the question? So now is the point of the question. We're going to vote to call the question. All in favor of calling the question, please say aye. Aye! aye. Any opposed, please say nay. Yay. Okay, the question has been called. Now we're gonna vote on removing the parliamentarian, which, yes. Okay, we're gonna entertain it. All in favor of removing the parliamentarian, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Yay. Yay. Gosh. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, standing vote. Please. Standing vote. Uh, well, how many people 
Yes, a hand raised vote. We're going to do a hand raised vote. All in favor of removing the parliamentarian, please raise your hand. One hand. And there are some people who are not delegates, so please make sure that only the delegates are raising their hands. Okay? All opposed, please raise your hand. <laughs> the, uh, the eyes have it. Okay, now we're going to go on to convention rules. Okay, we're, <laughs> approval of agenda, thank you. My second wow. Approval of agenda. Everybody has their agendas handy. Hopefully we can see the agenda on the screen in just a moment. Mr. King? I move to amend the agenda to add open floor after the trial committee and to move district representative caucuses before the delegate selection. Second. Okay. Mr. Secretary, do you have that? Yeah, open floor before trial committee, mm -hmm. district caucuses before delegate selection. Right. Mm -hmm. And seconded. Any discussion about that? There was a second. Any other dis anybody not like this motion that wanted to speak against it? To allow to add open floor so that any members who wish to bring up any motions allow them to do so. So moving open floor. Well, we are adding open floor. There is no open floor. But open floor at 430. So this would be moving it up to? No, add. I said add. An additional open floor? So, the motion is an additional open floor after trial committee report. Question? Point of inquiry, Mr. King, how much open floor is it? Uh, 20 minutes. I'd like to oppose this motion. Lawrence Ledlow, Lincoln Thank you. County. We've already spent enough time. We have an open forum later and we're running against our time. So let's get on with business. Any other discussion about the motion to amend the agenda? Yep, Mr. Secretary can repeat the motion. The motion reads, a motion to amend the agenda to add 20 minutes of open floor to before trial committee and district cost, I'm sorry, correction, to add 20 minutes of open floor after trial committee and move district caucuses to before delegate selection. Mr. Chairman. We're approaching lunchtime also, by the way. I'd like to amend the motion. Okay, Mr. Gemino. To delete the report of the trial committee's report as unlibertarian. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't seconded. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, which motion was seconded? So, there was a motion to delete the trial committee report. It was seconded. By who? By Trevor Stepp. It's withdrawn. Okay, it cannot be withdrawn. It it's been seconded. seconded. It was seconded. It was seconded. I heard it over there. Um, call the question. Call the question. Vote it down. So, at this time, we're voting to strike the trial committee report from business today. All in favor of striking it, please say. It was withdrawn, it was withdrawn but it was seconded. You're right. And then it was called the question. So it belongs to the body. Are we now we have discussion on that one? Well, the question was called. I know, we want to vote it down. Vote it down! So, uh, remind me, 
remind me, Mr. Secretary, at this time, we're, we're voting on Mr. Delano's amendment to strike, to remove this at from business. At this time, we would be voting on whether to call the question as okay. to amend business. Point of order. I believe this is an amendment to Mr. King's amendment to the agenda. And right now, we are voting on Mr. Ellison's calling of the question on the amendment to the amendment. So this is Mr. Ellison's, I'm sorry. This is a vote on whether to call the question as to whether we are adding the striking of the trial committee report. Okay. Point of order, you can skip the vote by asking if there's an objection to calling the question. That is correct. Is there an objection to calling the question? Okay. Now we're now we're voting on Mr. Delano's uh, amendment to strike. All in favor of striking the trial committee report from the agenda, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. The nays have it. Now back to Mr. King's amendment to the agenda to add public comment after the trial committee report as well as move up the uh, district caucusing to before the delegate nominations. All in favor of Mr. King's motion to amend the agenda, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. Your nay's nay. No. Division. No. Um, yeah, you yes, have to. You have there's still oh, people okay. in here that want to. You Thank have you. to do that. Okay. There's, there's been division calls. You can ask if there's 10 people. We have an adult. There's only one person. Oh, yeah. One person. Oh, you're right. Just one person at this point. I don't think you guys took my parliamentarian. So. We haven't adopted the rules yet. One. Any member, any delegate. Point of order. Mr. Fulner. Um, from my understanding of Robert, oh, excuse me. Madam Chairwoman, oh. requesting. Um, request for information. Um, if someone calls for the standing, or excuse me, for a, what did we just call for? The division. Am I correct in understanding that there should then be a request for those who are seeking division to raise their hands so you can determine whether or not there is a significant folks who want to do it and it's not dilatory to do so. Mr. Fulner, per our convention rules, which we have not yet adopted, that will be the case. But currently it is not. Right, so without those convention rules, it would go to Roberts, which this means the chair decides whether or not it's dilatory. Okay. Is that, is that correct or not? I believe that is okay. Yes, so I'm going to say that's dilatory. Thank you. And then, at this time, all in favor of adopting of um, approving the agenda as shown here, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please say nay. Nay. Thank you. The agenda is adopted. Okay. It's approved. It's approved. Thank you very much. I just want to get a quick check on the time. It is 11.55. There is, there is lunch coming soon at noon. Okay, 11.55 at this time. The next order of business would be the adoption of convention rules. So if everybody's had a chance to look those over. Mr. Semple, did you want to be... Uh, yes, I'd like to be recognized. I'd like to make an amendment to the rules. Okay. Uh, my name is Greg Semple. I'm a delegate from Oakland County. I would like to strike and replace Rule 7. It currently reads, motions to suspend the rules or end debate require a two-thirds vote. I'd like to place it, replace it with the language we've had in our convention rules as far back as I can remember, which reads, a majority shall rule at the convention except for platform and resolutions of the party which shall require a two-thirds vote of those present or as otherwise required by this bylaws. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, we'll hear a discussion about 
Mr. Simple's amendment? A motion? Greg, do you want to speak to it? Okay. Uh, right now, um, there are other things that require two thirds as part of this rules, and traditionally we've only required two thirds for things that are bylaws specifically say require two thirds. So this would just be a change to the threshold for a couple of things that aren't explicitly listed in our bylaws. Okay, thank you. And we've got this rule going back as far as I can Thank you, Mr. Semple. Mr. Steph, did you have something to say? Uh, Trevor Stepp, delegate from Livingston County. Uh, there's no need to to make this motion. I mean, that's in the bylaw already. It, it should just be strike, not replace. You don't need to replace anything. If you just wanted to strike it, that would be appropriate. Are you making an amendment to this motion? Maybe as a that was specific language being replaced with other language. I'd like to amend to strike that language to just the rule the vote would just be to just strike rule seven just strike okay. I would be in favor of that. Okay. If, if, unless they're going to go back and use robert's rules to say that he plays two thirds um mr chatterton andrew chatterton a delegate from wayne county um i would like to speak against this motion to either strike or replace this language the requested language which would be stricken under the amendment is part of our bylaws it's, it's already considered and the additional language from our convention rules that's attempting to be stricken is a matter to protect the rights of the membership here today that if you wish to restrict the rights of the membership who follow the process to be elected to this convention and are duly elected this rule protects that right so that if those persons, the rights wish to be restricted, it requires a two thirds vote of this body. And that is all that rule does. Mr. Fulner? Point of order. Uh, earlier in, the, in this business session, the chair had ruled when there was a decision of whether or not two thirds was necessary. She ruled that according to the by, that we that we actually have to go by our bylaws, which specifically say that during the convention, the only things that require two thirds are changes to the platform and resolutions. So I believe that this motion is out of order since you've already ruled that that's what we're doing and the proposal is actually not accurate. Is that right? Well, in the convention rules, as Mr. Simple said, there is the two thirds. Correct, but if the convention majority. rules are in violation of our bylaws as you already said they were, then it's moot, correct? Right. Right. So we haven't um, approved the convention rules at this time yet. There is a motion on the floor. There's an amendment to the motion on the floor to strike the language. Oh, then we said that was fine, right? Greg, you said that was fine to have a friendly amendment to strike the language, right? and have it be majority. So if uh, let's go ahead and vote on that, but maybe Mr. Secretary, you can restate the motion for us so everyone's clear. Okay, the present motion is a motion to amend Mr. Stemple's original motion to simply strike rule seven, since by definition that would revert it to the bylaws language which was to replace it. Okay, all in favor of this change, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Nay. Division. Thank you. Division has been called. At this time, we'll do a hand raise. Vote for that. So all in favor, please raise one hand if you are a delegate. All in favor of striking that language, and it would be majority, not two-thirds, please raise your hand. All opposed, please raise your hand. Okay. The, the change is approved. Mr. King? Uh, Mark King here on raising. I move to amend the I move to amend the rules. Uh, I move to that rule eight be amended in two in two subsections. Subsection three. Striking candidates must also be present to accept blah 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 all the way down to moving up is appropriate. 
uh, and to replace it with the convention shall have the sole right to appoint delegates to the national convention and any unfilled delegate spot shall be considered filled by NOTA. Point the secretary order. shall submit the list of Michigan delegates and alternates to the national immediately upon close the convention. And under subsection seven, uh, strike a majority vote and, and just strike that language. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a point of order. Lunchtime. I would like uh, clarification. The vote that was held before um, that motion was just made, was that on the main motion or on the amendment? I am the amendment. the amendment to the amendment. So now we're on the first amendment, oh. which means his motion wasn't germane. That was my point of order. Okay. Right. Oh. Connor and I are on the same page. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> He's sometimes right now. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for the clarification. The amendment was that we voted on to approve was to strike the language. Correct. And the main motion at this time is to re is now to accept that. Yes, thank you. So all in favor of the motion to strike that language, which would then be resulting in majority vote instead of two thirds. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed, please say nay. Nay. I think we need a break for lunch. I need a ruling. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> the yeas have it. The yeas All right. have it. Uh, request for information. Yes, sir. If we don't have an agenda, how do we know when we're coming back? So we have the agenda. I thought the agenda. I thought we were still in the middle of no, no, no. Well, these are rules. These are rules. We're on our bad. convention so rules. Right. <laughs> I have a motion. I, I move to extend time. Delay lunch for 15 minutes oh. in order to get to get through convention rules and whatever is after that that I can read. Convention rules. Second. And then minutes. The no, sandwiches no, will go bad. No, no. <laughs> Look, we have the agenda. We have our agenda. It is lunch time. I feel like these rules, uh, uh, the convention rules, is going to take more time than we have at this moment. So at this time, I would like to break for lunch. So are you ruling that my motion to extend time and suspend the rules is out of order? Is that what you're, is that you don't get to make okay. I'm hungry. The chair's motion to recess. I don't get to make a chair. Was I mean, I don't get to make a motion. I can't make a motion. This is a suggestion. Right. So Mr. Ellison, was your motion to finish this business before lunch, was it seconded? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So the motion on the floor is to continue for 15 more minutes to, to try to get through the convention rules. Any discussion about that motion? I discussion. Mr. Rathlin? Yeah, I'll be Rathlin, Wayne County. I'm hungry, the sandwiches are gonna get warm. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna ask that we vote this down and, and break for lunch. Thank you, any other discussion? Uh, it's not a motion to um, extend the time is not debatable is my understanding. Okay, thank you. Well, we have a motion on the floor to, ex to extend the time. All in favor of extending time, 15 minutes to try to get through the uh, approval of the convention rules, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Nay. The nays have it. At this time, we're going to break for lunch. We do have a lunch speaker. So anybody that has paid the package to um, have the food and have uh, enjoy the speaker, please stay. If you have not, we would uh, ask you to step out and go get some lunch elsewhere. What ticket do I get? We're coming. We're coming back. One thirty. Business resumes at one thirty. Thank you, guys. We gotta get it all out. Oh, we need ice, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. If someone wants to go get ice, I have no ice.
in the middle. That's interesting. <laughs> that's that's kind of stupid. Why would they do that? It's very different. Um, there's a bagel back there. And then I got a Diet Coke in my hand. There should be more, more options than what's on right now. No, there's no two liters in here. Alright. Maybe they're all out then. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll look in just a second for you. Ooh. Ooh, boy. We're gonna... Oh, beautiful. Okay. Oh, knocked over someone's phone. I need to hydrate. Hydrate? While we wait, we hydrate. So 
if you were to like, you know, Ice. 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 Okay. Where was the ice? Uh, garages. Ice. 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 I just know I, I the best thing about Flint is it's water, so I have better, better drink water. That's what you Dinner and then uh, one of them is drink ticket too. So one's a dinner ticket and one's a drink ticket. I'm not sure how the drink ticket works. <laughs> Yes, that is the right one to say. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Surprise. Surprise. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of Fago? No, never heard of it. It's from Michigan. I know, so that's why nowhere yeah. else in the U.S. have I seen it. Yeah, it is, but Insane Clown Posse loves Fago. Uh -huh. If you go to a, an Insane Clown Posse concert, they just spray Fago out into the crowds. You do? A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, that's so when Brandon fun. went to like their actual concert, he had to wear a poncho because the, the <laughs> stuff was just spraying all over the place. <laughs> And I bought, like, I bought a couple things. They, they didn't call me back anymore. But, like, one of the things was I, I backed around and was under, like, safely under the, you know, around the trains and between the grain elevators. And the smokestack of the truck oh, yeah. hit, like, a walkway that was hanging, oh, yeah. hanging from the... I think it's either a chicken salad or chicken salad. I'm guessing chicken salad. Yeah, I'm a better lawyer than I was a truck driver. Well, that's good. I don't think there's anything to I'm eat with I'm not very good at a truck driver, but I've been doing it for 30 years, so I figured. My dad was a truck driver for a long time. Yeah, I... I think we're good. Ah, uh, come on, Bill. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Napkin, or napkin, or champion. Uh, I'm not seeing any, which is weird. Oh, there's some down here. Oh, word. Okay, cool. From the hotel. <laughs> I am going to grab a little soda. Oh, shit. Rock and dry?
looks like tuna. And different choices here. Uh, not bad, not bad. I can't tell if this is ham or turkey. I guess that's turkey. Are you done? Well, we'll let the drink here. Okay. Uh, hmm. What kind of sandwiches are those? That, that looks to me like egg, tuna salad. Tuna salad, egg salad, I don't know. Yeah, I think I see tuna here. Let me just take a bite, I'll tell you. Oh, great. Thanks. Yep. Tuna? Yep. You get that? Okay, I'll switch you. <laughs> Everybody's on the yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's difficult. Okay, looks like you're going to make it. <laughs> We got cookies here. There you go. There you go. If you already grabbed lunch, uh, the cookie tray didn't make it up there earlier, so there's cookies as well. I don't know if I, the other ones were probably, I think I could, I This is my first foray. Ugh. There are a few empty seats. We've got two or three over here. Ray Moses, are you in the house? 
George, this is your receipt from Ben. Mr. Moses, are you here? I'll hang on to this one. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. I've got clear. So I, I okay. In a moment, we're going to have an update of credentials report, and then we will resume business. So, oh, one moment. Okay, we have a credentials report ready. Rich, McLean, come on up. Okay, so the update is uh, delegate report is 106 total delegates. So the majority is 54, two thirds is 71, and seven eighths is 93. Okay, we're going to resume business. Call to order after lunch. One moment. 151 at this time. Before we resume necessarily with the um, convention rules, I do have something to say. I want to clarify that I allowed an improper motion earlier. It was improper to allow a vote for the removal of the parliamentarian. She voluntarily stepped down. She was not removed. And it was improper of me to hold that vote. I feel at this time, considering the business this morning, that this Convention body is too unruly. It's preventing me from effectively conducting our business. And I'm asking the body to re replace me. And I'm looking for a motion to do so. Thank you, I think it needs seconded. Thank you. Uh, I move, oh, sorry. So at this time, there's been a, a motion and a second to replace me. Discussion. Motion to amend to remove uh, Leah Daly with Bill Delano. To replace oh. with Bill Delano. So there's been an amendment yes. now to second. replace me with Bill Delano. It has been seconded by Drew Canny. Discussion of that? Hearing no discussion, we'll do a vote to replace myself with Bill Jeleno. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. Sound like that. Someone, someone said division. So at this time, we'll do a, a show of hands. All in favor of replacing me with Bill Jeleno, please raise one hand if you are a delegate. Okay, thank you. Any opposed? Show of one hand if you're a delegate. Okay, the ayes have it. Okay, thank you very much. So that was the amendment. At this time, we'll take a vote of the main motion. Point of order? Yes, sir. Uh, who made the initial motion then to remove this? If I understand correctly, that was an amendment. Ryan Roberts, and then there was a second by somebody else. And then Mr. King's motion was an amendment to add Bill Jellin as an insurer. Correct. Thank you. Okay, now the main motion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. Nay. The ayes have it. Thank you, Leah. Thank you.
somebody? One thing I hope everybody remembers this afternoon is we're all here for the same reason. Come, might not be heard. Yeah, raise that thing up. All right. You know, we're all here for the same reason, and let's try to treat everyone with respect, and we'll just do our best to manage through what is a large amount of business that we have left to do today. Is that starting now? I, I'd like to think it's always been for me. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna I, I saw the morning on. session. Okay. All right, so we're starting the afternoon. We're still in rules. And we're still doing rules. You know what I could use? All right. I recognize, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Uh, Mark King, here on Raisin. Mark, you're recognized. Uh, I would like to move my motion that I had before we started the recess. Okay. Do, do I need to restate it? Does the secretary have the motion? Yes, he does. And there was a second on the floor at that time, if I recall. Could you, could you please read that so everyone who may not have been here during the morning session is aware of what we're voting on? Yes. Um, I move that Rule 8, which is now Rule 7, be amended uh, to have two amendments. Uh, subsection 3, by striking out the text, candidates must also be present to accept the nomination and if elected as delegate or alternate in their intention to attend to the National Convention, alternate, alternatively confirm the same acceptance and good faith intent to attend with the party secretary via email by the following Friday. If such confirmation is not received, their name is removed if elected with the next qualifying candidate moving up as appropriate. With the following text, the convention shall have the sole right to appoint delegates to the national convention and any unfilled delegate spot shall be considered filled by none of the above. The secretary shall submit the list of Michigan delegates and alternates to national immediately upon the close of convention. And the second change will be to section to subsection seven to strike the text a majority vote and. Okay. This was previously seconded. Do we need some discussion here? Does everyone understand what we're voting on? Okay. Do you want to speak to your motion? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nonetheless, this is pretty substantial. Would somebody like to speak for or against? No, I just want, uh, as a point of information, could someone read what the current thing is and then also read what the thing will be afterward if, it, if the motion passes? Just read the over. full text. Yeah. I think you just read the full text. Yeah. Yeah. Can I speak in favor of the answer? Okay. Jim Fuller, you're recognized? Uh, Jim Fuller, um, Macomb County. I rise to speak in favor of this amendment. Uh, the, the biggest change that this does is, is twofold from, the, from what was proposed. Um, one, it removes the necessity for uh, individuals to sometime in the next week remember to email the secretary so that there'll be a deck of delegates. Without this, there's a possibility that if your email's broke, you won't be a delegate, even if you were elected a delegate. Uh, and the other difference it does here is um, by removing the majority, that means the top 33 people who are voted for will be delegates. This is the way that we normally do things in any race where there are multi-member winners. It allows the, the minority to still be represented in the delegation. Thank you. Is there anyone would like to speak against this? I think it's time. Okay. I just grab this microphone here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as I understand it, uh, please in, in, reintroduce yourself. The Dan Goebel, uh, Livingston County. Uh, anyway, I uh, understand in the past that um, we had uh, a bunch of delegates. Uh, and they didn't show up for the national convention, and so we pretty much had a lot of alternates to fill those positions because these people got elected and they didn't have the balls to be there or something, funds, whatever. So anyway, the fact that the people here, I think we're going to get more of uh, uh, participation of people that are actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, representative of 
uh, the, you know, the group or the party, you know, the people are out here today, they took some time out of their days to be here, and then you get delegates, there's, if you get the delegates that are, that are not here, and, you know, the, we don't know who the hell they are, and then, you know, people, they, they come up with these slates, and then, you know, they get people that aren't here on that slate, and then, you know, they don't even, you know, first of all, you don't see where they are, you don't, you know, spend uh, 30 seconds at least telling you why they want to go, and then, uh, uh, so anyway, then you get these people showing up and na not being at national convention even, you know, and then you got to replace them with alternates. And uh, anyway, so I just say uh, we go with uh, what's printed, uh, and uh, I oppose the uh, amendment. Okay. Is there anyone else? We got a pretty clear sense. We're ready to vote. All right. All in favor of this change in our rules, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. Looks pretty clear. Do we need division? Passed? Okay. Sounds like a pass. All right. Moving on. Certainly. Absolutely. Sorry about that. It's just me. <laughs> Just too tall. So I'm um, trying to make sure we stay on track here and we get moving, so I was asking for some clarification. Do we have anything else related to the rules before we vote to adopt? I hear none. So um, I'm going to take it upon the vote. All those in favor of adopting the rules as amended, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Oh, look at that. Moving right along. So now we have the uh, prior convention minutes. I believe they're in your packet. There are minutes as written. I hope anyone who, uh, I hope you've read them. And are there any replacements or corrections that need to be made? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Greg Sump from Oakland County. I move we table the minutes or approval of the previous convention minutes indefinitely. Second. Okay, I do have a motion and a second to table the discussion related to the convention minutes. Um, any discussion related to that, is that necessary or pretty self-evident? Do you want to speak to it or against it? I want, it was actually, I guess, a um, request for information. I was wondering if the um, mover would speak to the motion. Okay. Get a brief explanation of what rationale. Um, both in the interest of time and due to the division of the party, I think for the time being we should just not deal with this item of business. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. We're here. So all those in favor of uh, we're gonna defer. Do we have a spot on the agenda where you're gonna want that? Until, until we bring it up. Until you bring it up. Okay, so off the agenda for the moment. All those in favor of deferring our discussion of the pre -con the last convention minutes, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Okay, sounds like the ayes have that too. All right. That brings us to the trial committee report. Who is the chairman of the trial committee?
Thank you, guys. Uh, again, I'm Trevor Sepp, uh, second vice chair, and I was uh, on the trial committee with uh, Mr. Jeff Patel here and Leah Daly. Um, and we'll kind of go through what was written, and uh, you should all have this in your packet or in the um, the PDF. And uh, Mr. Jim. Um, I motion that the body go to executive session <clears throat> for delegates only to conduct the discussion around the trial committee reports and the further considerations around that. Um, in the event that, uh, due to the nature of the, what is to be discussed, the party as an entity itself could face liability um, for discussion of the actions and then items related to these trial committee reports. If we do not go into executive session, the party can bear liability as an entity for claims made, as well as individuals who vote against going to executive session can bear that liability as well. Here, here, no executive. All right, we have a motion. Second. And it's been seconded. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to speak against this motion uh, for uh, somewhat of a practical matter. Uh, I noticed that uh, we did post online a uh, link to the convention packet, and the entire trial report is contained within said packet, so it's already out there. Thank you. Uh, just a point of information is Robert's Rules of Orders on Disciplinary Procedures does specify that these kinds of matters are discussed in executive session. That is um, the entirety of section 62 and 63. Thank you. Um, I, I'm gonna say that because um, of what he just pointed out, that if Robert's rule says we go to executive session, even though if it's moot because it was published online, we should do it anyway to avoid any issues that may lead, later lead to an appeal and damage the credibility of the convention. So for that reason, I call the question. All right, the question has been called and seconded. Point of order. Uh, this vote needs to be taken as a roll call vote of the members present due to the fact that those who vote against executive session can have the personal liability for preventing that if we fail to go to executive session. Okay. We're going to do this vote uh, via roll call. Mr. Secretary, uh, wait one moment. Point of information. Mr. Chair, could, could, could that be alleviated by simply asking if there's any objection to going to executive session? Yes. Yeah. It could be eliminated? Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there any objection to going to executive session? I object. I object too. I object. All right, we have an objection. Roll call only matters if it's voted down. Yeah. Stop trying to waste time. Roll call only matters if it's voted down. There's no liability if we vote to go into executive session. Hold the voice call. Mr. Hall. If we vote to go into executive session, then who cares? Mr. Chair. There is no reason to do this as a roll call vote. Correct. If you'd like me to make a motion that not be a roll call vote, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. I'm not Wait, why wouldn't we just do just a, a voice vote, and then if the voice vote fails to go into executive session, then we can do Thank the roll you. call vote to save time, because I'm getting the, the kind of feel that it probably is going to pass and we'll go to executive session, so I'm just, just trying to avoid wasting time. That's the angle I'm looking at it at. Can executive session be recorded? Yes. Yes, it can be recorded. you also that instead All right, let's take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay, nay. Nay. You can be in at what time? All right. It'll just be when we're done. 
We're in executive session now. Uh, so, everyone who is not a delegate, um, please step up. <laughs> Motion to exempt the baby. I don't think that she's a, a spy for us. <laughs> a recording chip in her. That we we recognize in Roberts for adding people after that time, and that is they have to get seven eighths of the vote. That's just a rule. No, that's not correct. Well, then show me the rule. Um, so the seven-eighths the seven rule is nowhere in Robert's Rules of Order. The seven-eighths rule is in the um, the LPM uh, bylaws, and that specifically deals only with approval of names who were not addressed and submitted to the Credentials Committee. To my knowledge, all four of them had their names addresses submitted to the credentials okay. committee let prior. me let me i'm going to ask for some help here i've got some people who've done a lot more of this than i ever have they were submitted before the convention all right we're going to make this easy i'm going to make a ruling and then you can overrule me if you don't like it um i was going to ask uh some people who have been through you know a lot of Battles like Mr. Hall and Miss Miss Selvet. And is Jim Hudler here, by the way? He I is here. In all the midst of all the bullshit that we've all dealt with, <laughs> here's a guy who, for more than 50 years, has represented our party, and I think we should all just recognize and thank him. Oh. So, I realize that I'm going to get somebody questioning my ruling one way or the other. Um, my, my simple read of that is that they weren't eligible at the time of the beginning of the convention, and I, not to agree with Andrew, but um, <laughs> I, think, I think his interpretation is correct, and this has come up in the past, it came up in Lance at the, uh, the golf course, and uh, so I think it's, we've got precedent here, um, and you're welcome to try to overrule me if you choose to, to tell me, Mr. Stemple. Uh, yes, I'd like to challenge the ruling of the chair. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. These names were submitted to the credentials committee prior to the convention, not during, but prior. All right. So, so we have an interpretation of my my ruling, and that's fine. Um, I I'm now just going to move right to a vote because I think we're going to go ahead. The credentials report was adopted without these names on it. It is not in order to amend the credentials report by any means other than that specifically addressed in our bylaws by 7 8 vote. The convention may approve additional delegates during the convention. We are during the convention. Those delegates were not on the credentials report at the start of the convention. This is out of order. Okay. I think we just have people that are reading things differently. Part of order. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. Just please defer just for a moment. I'm going to ask that, that we follow. Mr. Semple's motion to overrule the chair. I ruled that it would take seven eighths to reinstate the four, and he's questioning that. And so we're going to proceed now. All those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair that we maintain seven eighths, please say aye. Aye. All those to overrule the chair and move to a two thirds or some other function, please say aye. 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 I'm going to say it's very close. Um, we're going to ask those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, please raise your hand. And I'm going to need to count. Um, can, someone else, can someone else also counter count? Or, yeah, we can count off. And count off. Okay. Uh, my name is Bruce Jake Waste, J A Q U A Y S, for those writing at home. And I have been a candidate um, in 2020. I ran for supervisor of my township. I ran for Wayne State University um, two years ago. I was a third vote-getter in the state for us. And I'm running again this year for supervisor. 
In Greece, I like to go to DC, or I'm going to call the Green Bay, one or another. <laughs> hey, Kenny, I'd like to be that delegate to the National Convention in DC. I have been on the Secretary now for several years, member of the party, perennial candidate for Congress, uh, past district rep, and past, uh, and still in spirit, chairman of the Genesee County affiliate. And I'm requesting you to send me to DC to be your delegate, one of your delegates. And uh, you'll oh, yeah, like me, hate me, couldn't care less about me. I'll never lie to you, and you'll always know where I stand. So go to DC, do the you can count on. I will not be voting for Michael Rectumwell or anybody on the current LNC's re-election. Thank you much. Um, Dana Carver, I'm part of the Straits area. I'm also the District 1 rep on the board right now. Um, I have run for office multiple times. I've been on the board a couple times. I helped co-found the Straits area. Secretary again there. I've been an activist for a long time. And I went to, D I went to where was it, Orlando in 2020 and did my job and did my job on the online convention. So I'd be a good delegate and do the thing exactly how you're supposed to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. I was asked by um, someone that couldn't come today to be nominated for a delegate, so Greg Black out of our mid-Michigan area, as well as his wife, Shelby Black, to be um, delegates. Uh, Summer Powers, I've been with the party for like three years. Uh, I want to support Joe Brungard. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Alan Fitzgerald again, Wayne County. I was hoping to nominate Jerome Thalen, Capital Area. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jerome Schwab, and I am a resident of Macomb County, and I would like to nominate myself for a delegate for D.C. I am a disavowed party member of all politics, and I have found a home in this Libertarian Party, and I believe that this represents a lot of people out there that might not be represented party. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angela Thornton. I've been a member of the Libertarian, well, National Libertarian Party since 1995. Um, I've been a member of the Michigan Party since we moved here. I think most of you heard my name quite a bit this day, so I won't go on into any of that, but I would like to go to Washington. And if I may also, while I have the mic, nominate. Raphael Wolf, who is working today, but would also like to go. Thank you for your time. My name is Drew Kenny uh, from Genesee, and I would like to self-nominate. Um, and I'll forfeit the rest of my time. Thank hey, you. Drew. How are you? Here we go. Uh, greetings, everyone. Jeff Patel, uh, Oakland County. I'd like to self-nominate, and basically I've been doing membership chair for the last four years. I've been active with conventions for credentials for the last three, four years as well. I'm very busy doing a lot of work for the party, so I appreciate the support, and thank you. I'm um, Dana Carver, straight through again. Uh, I need to nominate Jamie Van Alstine and Michelle Gregory to be delegates to National. And I'll just keep it short and sweet. They've done a lot for the party. Please send them. Okay. Let's, let's pause for two seconds here. Just give our secretary a moment. Is he in good shape? Yeah. You guys are doing great, by the way. We're making up time. All right. Miss Bazuma. I'm Mary Bazuma um, from the West Michigan unaffiliated group. I would like to go to D.C. I have been a member of the Libertarian Party since 2005, and I've run every year, every two years, since 2012, including twice for governor. So yes, I would like to go to D.C. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Justin Maramonte, Wayne County. I'd like to nominate Tommy Leach, who's over there running the legislative chair table right now. Thank you. William Jelano, not to be confused with uh, my father up there. I'd like to uh, self-nominate for a uh, delegate for Washington. 
I'd also like to nominate my dad, Bill Jono, as well as so. Yes, it is. Uh, Brian and Bryce Ellison from Huron Raisin, and I would just like to nominate myself. I just had one other quick thing to add. I think it's a cool, fun fact. I'm the only person in the Michigan Libertarian Party who has a D.C. concealed carry permit. Fun fact. Send them. Oh, you have one, too? Yeah. Is it still active? Yeah. Damn. I didn't know that. Hey. I have nine in total. Yeah. Now, okay. This is, I want to break this up. This sounds like a lot of fun, but everybody else wants to move on. Um, do we have one more? Yeah, I have a few more nominations. All right. Donna Jelano, Brandon Morzabach, Forrest Dunn, Fred Hort, Shelly Stimple, and Stephanie Dunn. Are those people here? Yes. I, I know one of them's here because I'm married to her. You want to just, she's the one who makes me look good most of the time. And uh, who are the other, could we have the people raise their hands so people know who they are? All right, would any of you like to step up and speak? And that was the whole purpose of giving everybody 30 seconds. And I know for some of you that may be there's mobility issues. Can someone take someone on a microphone? Can we take the microphone to someone, maybe? Yeah, there we go. Sorry, I'm not involved in the mechanical part. Hello. I'm Stephanie. All right, quiet, please. Isabella Cowling, and I've been in the party for three years. And I've been very active, um, worked my way up to the legislative chair, which is a lot of um, stuff that's covered in Washington, D.C., bills and um, things like that. So I would like to accept the nomination for me and Forrest. Okay. Thank you. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Careful. Discharge. That was the Republicans trying to interrupt our meeting. Now, I guess before we get on with the voting, um, and this is something that, you know, from a procedural point of view, often in the past we've taken a break so we can get this onto something that people can manage. How do, how do you, the Secretary, do you have a proposal as to how this, the vote should take place here? We're going to print them. We're going to print them, okay. All right, nothing new there. And I, and I think the one thing that's kind of exciting, at least for me, um, I look at that list of names and I think, did I see 79 names? 75 names? Yeah, yeah okay. So the, the thing is, is we get 33 delegates plus our chair, that's 34, plus we get 50 alternates. That means everybody who stepped up to that microphone should be prepared to go. Because I can tell you one thing that Michigan has had a long tradition, and there's a bunch of people who've been to a lot more conventions than I have, is you will get in as a delegate. There are lots of states who don't fill their things, and Michigan being a top 10 state has always had great relationships around the country. And there's a likelihood that you'll be, have the opportunity to be elevated into another delegate slot. So keep that in mind. If you're really not going to go, we need to know that, and our, our, delegate, our chair needs to know that so that they can plan accordingly. But with the number of names we have, we have the opportunity to send everyone. Um, so just keep that in mind when you start voting. Um, you must have a majority. No, we struck no. that. That's, that, that's been struck. Okay. So you just... One of the rules, I think, still says to be a delegate, you must be a majority. No, no. no. That was. <coughs> okay, so I think we should have some clarification on that. Can uh, can someone speak to where we were with that amendment? Mark. <laughs> we do not strike a majority for a delegate to be selected. We did not strike that. I'm looking at 
number eight, the second to last rule that is still there. All you have to do is get more votes than none of the above. And number eight says the first 33 candidates receiving the greatest number of votes of at least a majority shall be elected as delegates. So we struck the standard, well, I believe, majority. Not, not did, did, did you, you, you struck number seven. You struck number seven. Where did you change eight as well? Okay, fair enough. Just trying to get a clarification. I move to close nominations. Okay. There's a motion to close nominations. Is there a second? There is a second. Okay. I am going to lean very heavily on the secretary here, and uh, in terms of process, they're going to we're going to print out um, vote. You know. We're going to move on with other business. Point, point of order. Take some time, I assume. Point of order. Oh. Vicki Hall, Vicky. West Michigan. Would it be possible to do a slow scroll to make sure for everyone who was nominated or self-nominated sees their name there before they run a final slate? I think we can do that. Mr. Secretary, could you just scroll the names with enough time so everybody can see if they've got their name up there? Names are on screen. Please look at the screen. If you do not see your name up here where it should, let me know. I am. I anticipated your point of privilege. Am I? Is that good enough? We'll give you maybe 15 at a time. We'll give you 20 seconds or so to prove that. You should know when you approximately where you should fall in there. We've been through this a couple times in my day. My understanding you're going to print this onto paper that we'll get a vote. And that's going to take some time to put all that together. And then we're going to give people a few minutes to actually vote. And then we'll come back and, and the, the panel. You've got, have you got something that does that? Who's going to handle this? I'll work with Trevor. You'll work with Trevor. OK, good. I like that volunteering. So yes. Who are the tellers who are going to be counting? That's what we were just talking about. Um, Trevor's got the team, and Jeff's going to work with them. Do we have other, We probably need several people to help with that. Do we have any volunteers? Is this a volunteer organization? I see a volunteer who's pretty familiar. Uh, I've got another gentleman up front here, and I've got uh, Mr. Bob Broda, and maybe Mr. Andrew Hall. How's that? So we got a team of about six people. Now, I guess while that's going on, if there's no objection, um, can we not proceed with the next item on the agenda, which is, um, boy, if I could read here, why read an appointed position panel, okay? And I'm not certain what that was supposed to be. Do we have a group of people who have been appointed to positions that are going to provide some input as to how they've been doing? Those people know who they are. They could come up to the front. Yes. Maybe. Maybe the, the eyes are getting a little weaker. Do we know how many people are part of this group? First thing we're going to do before we start all this voting is we're going to ask our credential chairman for an update. Oh, I'm sorry, I did that again. Mostly people tell me to be quiet. Um, 
We're going to, before we get to voting here, we're going to ask the credentials chair to update the credentials count based on who may have come after lunch and all the rest. Thank you. Um, okay, the updated credentials now report is as follows. The delegate count is 111. So majority 56, two-thirds 74, and 78 is 98. Uh, all, all, all teams promoted. All right. So there was some suggestion here that we would actually run the panel during the counting because the counting is going to uh, take some time. And I guess I would like to hear a motion that we rearrange the agenda a little bit to make that happen. Um, the panel that is supposed to be up next. Um, we certainly want to hear from them and what their experiences are out there. So I'm wondering if it would be feasible. What, do we have the count? How long do we think until we'll have the, the, the ballots ready for delegates? Approximately. Okay. We need 100 of them, right? 111. I'm, I'm going to say we're going to take a, a five minute, 10 minute recess to go to the restroom, do anything else you need to get done. And when you get back, we're gonna get back down to business. We've done so good so far. Thank so good. You. I think it's yeah, it's a little speed. I think I made a speech. I think one of these here. This one. Uh, a gift I stuck in here. Yeah. 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 Use it or applicable. I think I don't think it's really a good thing. I think this is an AMB conversation. Otherwise, it's also going to take a lot of time. You're speeches from the moment. But they're all stuck. So let's do this. Let's have us all up there. Who would you like to just start all of your speeches? Here. 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 But like, uh, yeah, a lot of things. Also, also tick them off. If you're dressed in your initial conversation, all those kids are all going to stay up here. So maybe let's do this. Oh, So whenever anyone says something's possible that you know is not possible, you go, yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. So that was the butt monkeys. Okay. So when you're talking about this, it's like this, it's going to happen. Yeah. And then I was just joking because I knew you didn't know what else. So then I just thought you knew it was funny. So you're 
member that's the subject of that vote can't vote. So that's kind of a, the Roberts logic behind it. But um, if delegates are challenged for different reasons, say there's 10 delegates being challenged, but one is because they're not a member, another is because they weren't elected validly, those votes are separate, and the one that was challenged for a different reason gets the vote on the other one. So you, it's only the people that were challenged on the exact same grounds. It's time ridiculously time consuming, but I actually would not have a problem with that if it was on a person by person basis. But because it was the same Because it was grounds. a block of people, I right. had a problem because then that could sway the outcome yeah. of the vote and it's presumptive on the but, but it was the same ground, though. If one is removed on that grounds, then and all of them. That's why it's a block. And it can only be of a constituent unit as well. Let's say there were other delegates, other, other counties that had notice problems. One can vote on the other county, the one county can vote on the other county. Uh, you can only challenge as a block one out of one constituent unit. And the constituent units here happen to be counties. At the National Convention, the constituent units happen to be states. So you can challenge an entire state's delegation. But let's say you planned on challenging five states. They have to be handled one at a time. You can't challenge five states in a block. Even if it's on the same grounds. Yeah, it has to be. Yes. Yes. It, it is worded that way. And it, it's not like I'm clear at all. And that happened last national convention, as a matter of fact, where all of Pennsylvania was challenged under the grounds that they weren't elected properly. There were like and they, delegations showing up. That, those were, that was a different challenge. But Pennsylvania was a big one. It was like 40 some people. Um, they were challenged at the convention. Uh, Pointed position, so I could reference it and bring you my entries again. City of Battle Street. Okay. The one with the two delegations was Massachusetts. It's two boards, so there's the property That was taxes, a much smaller one. Not that, okay. not that having a but smaller one. But I like to say just the Battle Creek Board of Review. But, but I just wanted to point out that gotcha. it has 40 okay, great. people. Thank were you. Were excluded because the, it was their challenge. Yeah. But it is pretty, it is, oh. 
But it is pretty clear in Ben Roberts. And again, I believe that you were saying exactly what you want. But it's the same thing with the suspension of the rules. I'm glad you figured that one out. But you want to hear what you want to start talking about in Sergio at that certain of my game. You have people voting. Okay, the the body here is the delegates. But you have people voting on who's going to be delegates when you don't have delegates yet. It's Schrodinger's. Well, I've thought about that. It's Schrodinger's minute. delegates. Technically, nobody's a delegate. So who can, who can so who can approve the grant? But for the narrow exception of the credentials report. Everybody, unless they're challenged, is a presumptive delegate. But they're not an action. No, it's but that is the concept. That's the logic behind it. So the only actions that are in order before the credentials report is adopted are the same actions that would be in order in the absence of the because there are certain votes you can take in absence of a quorum. You could vote to take actions to find a quorum. You could quote that Sally needs to go call all of those lazy asses. You can change the rules of a quorum without a quorum. No, no, no. But you can vote to take actions to obtain a quorum, and you can vote to adjourn to a certain time to give you time to go track down those wayward members. So the rules for credentialing are very simple. When did you uh, get your public hearing license? Uh, two years ago. Yeah. How was that process? It was very difficult. It seemed like yeah. I read a lot. Yeah. 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 Were you? Are you a public hearing at all? I thought I didn't know if you were. Are you a public hearing at all? No, I am not. Actually, I want to get a picture of you. Uh, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay with being touched? I think errors. But I always ask because yeah. I don't want to make some errors. He'll take them away. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay, folks, we're going to start getting together here. I want to explain what you're going to be doing. Order! Order! Folks, can we finish up conversations? And I had a couple people who offered to be tellers, and I remembered Emily and Andrew. Writing the rules. Okay. Um, you, you can see I got a bunch of smart people helping me, and which is proof that politics is a team sport. And uh, I, uh, I think it's really important to recognize that going to the national convention is a big thing, not just for you, but for what you commit to everyone here as part of that team to represent the state of Michigan. Um, we have a long history of participation at all levels at the National Convention. Um, I've only been, had the good fortune to go a couple times. Once as chairman in uh, 2016. And uh, my, my most vivid memory was uh, I had gone out to the up to the uh, registration desk, and uh, our good Larry Warner, who's standing over there in the corner by the door, was helping helping the national committee with registration. And I had a question, and I went out there to talk to him, and he was watching C-SPAN live, and he went, "Oh my, I think you better get in there. And if you don't know the rest of the story, you'll have to ask someone else. But it's a good one." Can we write our name on the ballot? Say that again. Write our name on the ballot. No, don't write your name on the ballot. Don't write your name on the ballot. So I'm gonna. Mr. Stemple has a question. Uh, just a, a point of order. Are we to vote for up to 33 delegates? No. Let me let me explain. You can vote for up to 83 delegates. Okay. So you can vote for three. You can vote for 30. You can vote. For 83. You cannot vote for 84. If you vote for 84, your entire ballot will be spoiled by rule. Mr. Chair? If everyone can get settled, please. Mr. Fulmer has the microphone. Um, if those of us who hadn't received the ballot, who should we speak with? Folks, we really need order in the room. The speaker cannot be heard. Could you please repeat? That? If we haven't received our ballot, can we inquire? Okay. We're just okay, getting started with that process. We have tellers, and they're going to each work with you. And I realize this is this is a complex and important process, but um, it can go faster. It can go slow. It's just up to what you want to do. Um, microphone, Mr. Bowman. Quick question. You can speak where everybody can hear it. Um, yeah, can everyone hear me? 
right. Um, way, how many delegates and alternates again, just so we're clear, the number are actually gonna win? Okay. There are 83 that are going to win if we have that many that people vote for. Okay. Um, they have to have more votes than none of the above, which people can write in. And we have 34 seats, 33 of which are chosen by this convention. We have 50 alternates, up to 50 alternates, that are chosen by the convention. Does that answer your question fully? Um, oh, one other. On the none of the above, if you write none of the above, doesn't that mean don't vote for anyone else? Correct. Yeah. Correct. But that also means that none of the above will get a vote from you. And anyone who did not exceed the full number of none of the above will not be chosen, even though they have votes. So, everybody got that? I'm thinking, what could have been more arcane as a fashion for doing this? Anyone got a slide rule? Stones in a basket. Stones in a basket. I, I'll take that as the best answer so far. We have a second for stones in a basket. Now, everyone is coming up and getting their ballot, and this process is going to take 10 to 15 minutes. At best. We have a, a classic example of a printer here being doing what printers do best and not cooperating. Do we need to run it to the... We are proceeding uh, to the minor uh, slight slowdown to the progress, so that is part of the reason why we're All a right. little behind what we're hoping. All right. But it is so, so the secretary is uh, proceeding with his work, and it's going to take a little time to do that. I'm going to exercise a little uh, discretion of the chair. Does anyone have a really good joke that's appropriate for... We got we got a volunteer. Come to the microphone. And uh, all right, this is for your entertainment. All right, all right. Quiet down, quiet down. You're gonna want to hear this. Quick point of order though about the ballot. Go ahead, Mr. Something. Uh, please know that Andrew Gale is on here twice. So for the people counting and the people that want to vote for Andrew Gale, note he is on here twice as being nominated and the second for him. Okay. All right. All right, listen up. This is what my seven-year-old tells me, my seven-year-old godson. His father's in prison for seven years for being an addict. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm raising his son, so he's mine, basically. Um, this is what my seven-year-old tells me after school. What did one burp say to the other? Let's be shitheads and come out the other end. Did that get a laugh? There must be someone that thought that was funny. What did one burp say to the other? Okay. Do we have anyone who would think maybe they can do better than that? Uh, an actual joke. Okay. And you're not helpful. Right. Everyone's doing their work right now. I should just let it slide. Where's Mike? He's a pro. I think the most obvious joke is, how do you get a libertarian room to be quiet? Give them a written exam. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Anyways, 
Andrew Hall's going to collect all of the ballots. Please don't write your name on it. Has anybody not gotten the ballot? Write your name on it. That helps a lot. You see, you want to write Andrew Hall's name on it. I don't think you're right Thank you. 
Okay, we're getting, we have a few people that still have not turned in their ballot. Okay, that's fine. Keep cranking here if we're going to get on schedule. So, remember, there's other events later tonight, and we need to make sure that we respect time. So, those of you who still are getting your ballots in, please continue to work on them. Meanwhile, the folks who are going to be part of the panel, the uh, appointed positions panel, I don't know how many of you there are. Could it be the three people off to the right there? Okay, if, if uh, Greg Whitaker, Andrew Duke, and Leah Bailey could come up, please. Or not. Yeah, the panel, we're going to bring them up here up front. Well, uh, if you want to take your seat, you, you may get off to a head start. Um, looking for Leah. Andrew Duke. I saw him there the day. Could we get those two up here, please? You know, what's interesting to me, Donna is in part of this. She was elected. Look at her to be a Oh, 
Good, uh, all right, we're almost done with the collection portion. When the tellers go to the back of the room or the other room to count, we're going to do our panel and try to stay on time. Is Andrew Duke in the room? And I don't see Leah either. Can you get the bulk to come in, please? We're going to go ahead and proceed with our panel. I think this is probably one of the more important things we're going to do here today. There's one of them. All right. Yeah. Can everybody get their seats, please? If you have not yet turned in your ballot, you need to do so in the next two minutes. Work, Andrew Duke out there. And then come back yourself. You know, this floor got to be your buying cell. Although, you know, it's kind of a spot for the moment. Yeah. So I'm going to have Donna back here to MC. Balance. And that allows me to get my own face out of here. And besides you, the private boy turn. Yeah. All right. Could everyone please settle down into a seat? This, uh, panel that we put together. I'm gonna smack it. Mr. Broda, can you get that corner of the room side for me? Order. Order everybody. Come on, please. Do we have anyone who still has a ballot in there? I do. Okay. If you, could, if you could please proceed post haste to get those to Emily. I'm going to move over by. Okay. 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 There's one gentleman right here. And it looks like Mr. Cashman, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyone who's left needs to get their ballot to Emily. That means you. Okay? Claire, walk it over to Emily. That's it. And I think we have only one or two left down that. Okay. So here's what's going to go on while the tellers are are counting and tabulating all the votes for delegates to, to Washington. Meanwhile, the important work of Liberty goes on. And we have with us three people who are working in government to some extent, uh, have been appointed to a position, responsibilities, and, and I'm going to let them characterize how they're making their impact. But to do that, I'm going to get a break from the microphone, and I want to introduce my friend and someone that I've worked with a lot over the last several years. Donna Grungle Craig is the uh, main force getting started the group up in Traverse City and is actually an elected trustee to Mancelona Township there. He's going to moderate the panel and ask our, our uh, enthroned group here uh, relevant questions and uh, depending on how well that goes we'll see how much time it takes and I'm going to work to help with the the county make sure everything goes fine. 
Oh, Jeff, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I was just waiting for the ballots to get to come in. Were you recruited to do that? Yes. 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 <laughs> Donna is oh. very polite, and I'm sure you'd be more than happy to let you I am happy. I just got drafted. I drafted uh, mine either way. way. I lost okay. track. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is the whole package because he'll he's gonna introduce himself, which is great bailout for me. Yeah, hello everybody. Yes, I am uh, Brian McWilliams. Uh thank you for the boost. Uh some of you might know me, I'm uh, a host and founder of the Lions of Liberty podcast and website. Some of you might be familiar with that. Uh, also serve as communications director for the National Party. So it's great to be with you guys. I'm going to help moderate this panel and also the presidential roundtable. Last call for ballots. Anybody? Last call for ballots. Anybody who volunteers to be a teller? Anybody or tellers? No, not volunteer teller. Who volunteered before? Oh, okay. I shall. Brian McWilliams is my name. Have you lovely people been introduced yet? Okay, so first up is Gary Whitaker. Greg, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Greg Whitaker. My apologies. Uh, Greg Whitaker, he is uh, the Mentor Township Supervisor, so he'll be uh, weighing in on his experiences there. We also have Leah Daly. She is South Lions Planning Committee, on the Planning Committee, as well as the Housing Committee. And last but not least, Andrew Duke. He is the Battle Creek Board of he is on the Battle Creek Board of Review and uh, works with property taxes and also income taxes. So they will be weighing in on their experiences at their appointed positions. What I'm gonna do is ask them a couple of roundtable questions that they'll all get a chance to weigh in on. And then at the end, if any of you have prepared statements or anything you want to do, just uh, talk about your experience. We'll have a couple of minutes for that. We'll see, there might be time for questions and answers at the end, but we're running behind, this being a libertarian convention. So we will see. Uh, and also, I know there's been a lot of strife today. Just like on Oprah, if you'll reach under your seats, you will find dueling pistols for each and every one of you that you can use as soon as we wrap here. <laughs> Ten paces, everybody, no cheating. Okay, so, first off, um, can you give me a little insight? I'll, we'll just kind of go down the line this first one, then we'll mix it up. So, Greg, can you give me a little bit of insight into the process you went through getting appointed? How was that? What tactics did you use? Was it a horrible experience or not? No, it was a pretty simple experience. Um, I started going to township meetings about four years ago. We were um, angling for a cannabis license, which we did get the pre-approval, but anyway, that's another story. And in the meantime, I didn't miss any meetings for about three years. And our township supervisor took the local fire chief's position, and he didn't want to be in two leadership roles. So, and nobody else wanted the job, so I stepped up and I volunteered, and I was appointed in June, and I will have to file in April to run this fall. So, and that is, so it was no big deal for me because nobody else wanted the job. I so, I, beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so I've got the job, and um, my big goal and what I am trying to do is the taxation is theft. <laughs> but as long as we're collecting taxes, we've got to spend the money in a responsible manner. Like giving it back. Well, unfortunately, we can't do that. So in the meantime, trying to get give taxpayers something to show for their money, um, roads. The township hall. Roads, roads, roads. Roads. We got, we got the money. It's got to be spent. I would just give it back, but that's not an option. My board would never approve of that. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Leah. How about you? All right. She's abstaining from that. The process to get appointed was extremely painful because I had to interact with the government. <laughs> But no, really, it was extremely simple. All I had to do was be told, hey, you should apply for these boards. And I went online, at least for the city of Battle Creek, it's online, sometimes they have paper forms. I chose the committees I wanted to be on, ranked them, one through three. 
I then got a phone call interview from two of them, at which point uh, I said, yes, I'll still do this. They went to the city commission, I was appointed, and then I have gone through training with a state uh, tax, property tax official and income taxes. Well, let's continue on. Since you've got the mic, we'll ask you this next one. Let me uh, get a little bit of insight and tell us all how some of the libertarian principles have impacted um, the decision you might have made in your position, and then also a little bit how your positions impacted the citizens that you are, uh, I don't know, helping, attacking, depending on how you, you look on the taxation front. As Greg already said, taxes are theft. <laughs> so speaking from our platform, uh, whereas taxation is theft, the legislature should find more voluntary means of supporting state services such as lotteries and user fees. The income tax should be repealed. Taxation of privately owned real property should be eliminated in effect and makes the state the owner of all lands by forcing individuals to pay rent to the state. Yeah, the remaining personal property tax on Michigan businesses should be repealed and tax favoritism should be illegal. Abatements, subsidies, credits, or other incentives to businesses based on geographical area, job creation, or any other criteria deny equal protection under the law. But taxes are, of course, a reality. So the best I can do is act within the law. Hear an appeal on, let's say, your property tax. You don't believe that that, that is the true value of your home. And as long as you can give me some sort of logical argument, I'm going to agree with you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. You're passing again? Okay. Um, well, I touched on the taxation and stuff. Yeah. And um, Board of Review, that's starting Monday. I assume you have your first Board of Review meeting. And we have our second one is on Thursday. And we've all had the training. So we can evaluate people's complaints about their property taxes. And um, as supervisor, I act as secretary of the Board of Review. I am not, so. But um, I, you know, we're there to hear the cases, and my Board of Review members are all very conservative and are not big on paying taxes. And they were, I wouldn't say that I handpicked them, but I did some vetting when these Board of Review members were, were picked. So that's one thing. And I just want to give our township citizens the biggest bang for their buck that we can get. And not be hoarding money. That is an issue that this township has had in the past. And some of this money needs to be spent rather than sitting in the bank account collecting dust. That's it. Well, let's go to another question. So you guys mentioned you know, your, your boards are coming up. Uh, Andrew, you mentioned the ways in which you're able to uh, to use a, utilize your libertarian philosophies to give people a reason to lower their taxes and help them do so. Tell me a little bit about how the experience that you gentlemen have had, and of course, lady, uh, in how we can apply, I guess, the know thy enemy, right, into applications for some of the libertarian members. How can that how can that affect our community from what you've learned? So unfortunately, the state has taken away uh, the Board of Review for Property Taxes allowances in certain areas. So the state has put a stronger stranglehold on what the Board of Review can actually do. At this point, it really ends up being you need to prove that your property is worth less than the government thinks it is. Uh, but one piece of advice before you waste too much time on it uh, in Michigan, your property taxes can only go up at most 5%. Uh, so your value of home might increase faster than that. In fact, it usually does, especially with real estate skyrocketing right now. If you were to sell your home, it would uncap that property tax on the next buyer, or if you buy a new home, will probably be paying like 150% of what it currently is today. Uh, that's just a rough guess estimate, but don't sell your property, especially if you locked in a three and a half percent interest rate. Yeah, so the state's taken away from local government, and one of the big things that we are working on now, we are circulating petitions to get the 
the siting issues put on the ballot this fall because the state, they have mandated that the Michigan Public Service Commission will have final say on any and all solar and um, wind generating plants. And this is all to meet their goal by 2030 of having a, a real high percentage of Michigan's electricity produced by renewable energies. So I don't know if a few people are aware of that, but that was taken away from local units of government. So basically we have no say whatsoever in solar or wind power. So that's one thing that we're trying to give back to the people. Um, we have petitions circulating in our township as, as well as all of Shoy County. Michigan Farm Bureau has these petitions circulating as well. So that's a pretty big liberty issue when the government can force anything down your throat whether you want it or not. So, power to the people. Fuck the government. Amen. Uh, fuck the government. So, in your interactions with government entities, are there any skills, trips, uh, tricks or techniques that you might have picked up along the way that you found is going to grease the skids for liberty? Is there, are there ways of speaking with the government if people are trying to enact change in their local communities and talk to them? What has been more effective than others when trying to make change and make these people understand where we're coming from and get them to buy in? I guess I've found that the most effective thing is to get the citizens, get, get the voters on, on your side. Because most voters, whether they, whether they believe it or not, or realize it or not, they are libertarians, especially Republican voters. If they actually stand back and look at themselves, they're actually in the middle of the road. And there are some Republican viewpoints that aren't palatable to libertarians, as well as some libertarian points that aren't palatable to Republicans. But most Republicans are fairly sensible. And if you talk to them and explain them, maybe in the southern part of the state, but not so much in the northern part of the state. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, so, so, so that is one thing that I found is you got to talk to the voters, get the voters on your side, get the voters brought over, and then let them spread the word to the other politicians. I am not going to run as a libertarian because in my township, oh, hold on. Hey, wait a minute, he can win. There are 850 registered voters in my township. Now, of those ballots cast, about 80% of them are straight ticket Republican. Yeah, right. So the last supervisor, he was he ran unopposed for the 15 years that he was supervisor. So I could run as a libertarian this fall, but somebody may come in and do a write-in. Or a Democrat may run against me. You can't know, always. You would know by April if a Democrat was going to run. Right. So right. Well, but then there's still there's still the, the whole right in thing, and I feel that oh yeah right. You know, I'm a libertarian. I'm a libertarian, and I can do more in office, sitting in that seat as a libertarian Republican, than I can losing as a libertarian. Okay. Justin Amash? No. Yeah. Wow. We're on a all right, all right. Save it for save it for the cigarettes and the alcohol later. <laughs> Plenty of time. <laughs> I'm also the chair of my local neighborhood planning committee council. I forget which C it is, uh, but I am there because I wanted to get out there. I wanted to be a part of things, which in fact led to those board of review appointments. Uh, but that's my advice: get out there. Because if we're only here in this room, then our message is not getting to the people that need to hear it. And I assure you, the people that sit in that room with me, in my neighborhood, they need to hear these values. I don't know if they're all Republican or Democrat, but they all seem to just vote the same. They all have the same opinion. So break up the monotony and put your view out there. Thanks. Very good. I, I mean, that was actually one of the next questions we were going to bring up, is how 
you know, you feel your experience could help somebody, could help other libertarians run for public office. And I think you kind of nailed it there in that you start small, get people to know you, win them over, and then you guys, obviously you're more likely to listen to a friend than an enemy, than someone you don't know, when you make yourself available in the community. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add on to that? Um, what other experiences you might have had in running for public office in general? Well, I personally have no experience running for public office, but I'm pretty sure that being appointed to those uh, formal boards of review, I don't think those are uh, boards of review that are a uh, DEI kind of committee. These are, uh, you need to have credentials to sit on them. It looks good. It lists all these things uh, if I were to run for city council. Lee, Greg, anything you'd like to add to that? Experience, there you can't make up. You know, it's the actual experience and people pay attention to that. Um, this will be my first publicly elected position. I served on the Farm Service Agency Board, which was an elected position in, in Sheboygan and Pisgah counties. I've been on the Conservation District Board in Sheboygan County, which was elected. Uh, Michigan Farm Bureau, I've been county president for eight years, as well as on the Michigan Farm Bureau County Board for about 20 years. I serve on public, or on, um, at the state level, on different committees, policy development, AgriPAC, whatever. So, and once again, you build the resume, and then you get the resume out so people can see what you've done, see what you've accomplished, and that's all you can do. You gotta get out and talk to people, shake hands, Tell them, what you, tell them what you can do, or what you want. It isn't always what you can do, it's what you believe you can do. On that note, just out of curiosity for both of you, when you're working uh, with these students, do you outwardly say, hey, I am a libertarian, or do you let your ideas, do you let the, uh, the philosophy, what you're trying to accomplish speak louder than a political affiliation, and then let them, let them find out later, like uh, your jack-in-the-box popping out? I, I tell people where I stand, what my beliefs are, and I don't necessarily even tell anybody what my political statements are. Mm -hmm. I told my neighborhood I'm libertarian, but I don't think that's relevant for the Board of Review. That could be a conflict if they looked at it that way. All right. So how about this last question? I think you already talked about it a little bit, uh, but do you have any plans to use your experience to launch a campaign for public office? Well, I'm going to have to run this fall. Right. <laughs> so, um, but I don't expect it to be much of a campaign because, well, we'll see after April. We'll, we'll see what I got as far as as far as competition. But um, yeah, but I'm not expecting much of a challenge. But if I get a challenge, then I'm buy campaign signs and knock on doors and make the rounds. So. Not at this time. I'm a new father of twins, uh, identical girls. Uh, but one day I'm going to run to unseat Chris Simmons. Right. I just want to make a point. You can kiss two babies when you campaign, and they could be your own babies, which is always a plus. No more kissing random ugly babies for you. Um, I, does anybody have anything? I know uh, some of you have prepared some statements to read, just assessing your position. Uh, Leah, I know you have uh, something prepared, and then of course Andrew, Greg, if you have anything else you'd like to add at the end, I'd love it. And then we have a couple minutes for Q and A before we wrap up. Uh, hi, thank you. I didn't understand the assignment, so I ended up writing. Um, we had these questions ahead of time. I ended up writing a little bit of a sh speech for myself, so I thought I would just go ahead and read that to you guys. Um, so, of course, most of you know me. My name is Leah Daly. I'm from South Lyon, Michigan, which is located in the southwest corner of Big Bad Oakland County. Woo! Currently, I'm a commissioner on the South Lyon Planning Committee. This is, this is an appointed position that I applied for last year. There was a vacancy on the board. I was also appointed to the South Lyon Housing Committee because there was a vacancy on the board. Actually, with the housing committee, uh, they needed one more member before they could resume business, so they welcomed me with open arms. <laughs> South Lyon has an interesting dynamic. Though we are in Oakland County, our city shares a border with Livingston and Washtenaw counties. 
We're about 30 minutes north of Ann Arbor. We are a city of 10,000 residents within Lyon Township, but we have our own police force, a six-person city council, and a mayor. Our commission boards are the Downtown Development Authority, Historical Commission, Planning Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, Cultural Arts Commission, Cable Commission, Board of Ethics, Housing Commission, and Road Improvement Committee. That's too much government. That's a lot. <laughs> South Lyon is 90% developed, over 90% developed, with the majority of that development being residential. We are nestled between Novi, Brighton, and Ann Arbor. It is what you would call a bedroom community. I was a little leery that they just let me join the planning committee knowing almost nothing about what the position entails. All I knew at the time was a little bit about Robert's Rules of Order, bylaws, and I knew I was gonna sit for the national anthem, which is an agenda item at every meeting. <laughs> After attending my first meeting and reviewing the previous meeting minutes, I was flabbergasted. There seemed to be a lot of wasted time talking about facade, like the proposed brick to siding ratio, and if that siding was tan or was it khaki, or voting to approve a waiver for a developer to plant evergreen trees when the city ordinance calls for shade trees. It all seemed a bit arbitrary at first. At first. What if a small business owner wants to open up a product or service shop in South Lyon and paint it hot pink with an eight-foot electric blue sign? It's their business risk, right? Any submitted plans for growth and development within our city, along with their architectural firm, must first get the plans approved by the building inspector, the fire department, the zoning board. Depending on the development, it might be wise to submit traffic and market research studies. Those plans often require approval from the planning committee before they go before the city council. In South Lyon, we have a lemon lot, okay? Right in the middle of downtown, right on the corner, 10 miles by Metro. It formerly was a restaurant that changed ownership five times in 10 years. They said it was first. What I heard is that the plumbing is a mess because the property right next door is a car repair shop that 100 years ago was a gas station and that they have buried oil tanks that, well, they're underneath the property and the next owner needs to remedy the problem and most likely demo the lot before they can rebuild. For now, the city is stuck with a downtown eyesore. People move in and out of South Lyon every year. Some people stay longer than others but the city continues to exist and the prosperity of the city is shared by all, the city would be taking on the risk of allowing a poorly thought out business plan to set down their roots in our community. A collision shop zoned light industrial across the street from a neighborhood zoned residential, it's probably not a bad idea that there's an ordinance that the collision shop has to have an opaque fence surrounding the parking lot where they hold the wrecked cars waiting for repair. A little common sense can go a long way in this position. All right, we have a couple minutes, guys, but if there are any quick questions, yes, go ahead. We have a, we have a microphone in the audience. Okay, I yeah, um, I'm curious, and I'm sorry, I know it's probably supposed to direct it here, but I just want to see, and, and first of all, I'll just introduce myself. I've been, Scotty Bowman from Detroit, been elected twice to the um, well, the Community Advisory Council and also been appointed to the Zoning Board of, Appe Bo Zoning Board of Appeals by a well-known Democrat whose policies I had led protests against or participated in protests again not too long ago. But in any case, um, I wanted to just see a show of hands. How many people here have either been elected or appointed to public office ever? Thank you. Uh, any other questions for any of our panelists before we wrap up and get back to business? 
No? I, I presume it is. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Once again, Greg Whitaker, Andrew Duke, and Leah Dale, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And I'll give you back to Bill. We're going to put you on the recommended pinch hitters list. Appreciate it. Well, we're getting back close to getting on track, folks. Um, we do have a hard stop at 5 o'clock. As you know, the room is being refitted. We have a hard stop at 5 o'clock. So, we still have some business to attend to. First and foremost, do we have any candidates that are currently running for this year? Candidates. <laughs> announced candidates for, for ballot. Okay. Now, obviously, we're going to have a nominating convention later in the year, and we're going to ask people to run. How many here in the room anticipate that they might be a candidate? Oh, well, that's better. Good. Um, I got to tell you, it is what we do. We're a political party. We nominate candidates. If we fail to nominate candidates, then we're not doing our job. And I think it's important, as most of you are representatives of your affiliate or region or whatever, um, that we're generating interest in being part of our party and giving them the requisite support necessary to go out and effectively speak for our party. Um, I can just look around the room here, and I, I want to call a few people out in case you don't know who they are. Um, I bet you most people know Mr. Greg Cresswell was our candidate for governor in 2006. 2006. Okay. Um, I don't see Mary Bazuma in the room now, unless I'm just overlooking her. Okay. <coughs> Mary was our candidate for governor in 2010 and 2022. Um, there's lots and lots of other people, you know, that's one of them. I was a candidate in, yeah, in 2018 and uh, set a new record for the total number of votes for governor that we've ever gotten. And I, I, I think a lot less of that in terms of what I did than the fact that many of the people in the room contributed to that campaign, whether it was their time or their money or both. Um, you may have heard the name Raphael Wolf, and if you haven't met him, you should. Uh, Raphael helped run my campaign, and we ran something on the order of 5,000 radio ads statewide. And I think it's one of the reasons that we were elevated a little bit and got the opportunity to go on national public radio and even some of the, the pay TV interviewees. Um, we have some relationships out in West Michigan where there's a guy that runs a political show and I was on his show three times more than any other person that year. Um, it, it's really, a, it's a work product. Um, I think Leo was kind of talking a little bit about that, about just getting involved and volunteering and getting your name known and showing people that, you know, libertarians, well, some of them probably have a tail, but I, I really haven't investigated that act. Um, but but the, the notion that the public knows us is probably the fact that they don't know us and we have to be in the field and in, on the ballot and talking and competing to be part of that conversation. So um, is anyone in contact with the people who are counting? They're furious to count you, myself. Well, I just wanted to see how close we were getting to a, uh, a total. Um, this is supposed to be open floor. We're right about in that time period. Scotty, do you have an open floor thing you want to present? I guess if you want to call it that. I mean, I, could, I don't know if it's the emotion or not. Well, I, I don't know what you're thinking, so <laughs> proceed. All right. Um, I'm just thinking that since we have a hard stop at five and there's a couple items of business, I think there was a pre-submitted resolution that we voted on. And there was the um, caucusing to fill vacancies. Thank on, you, thank you. That is on um, here. District offices. I think probably the second thing is most important. Second is most important. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, he's helping me here. You know, it's good to have a former state chair up here. You know, helping with organizing. Um, I think.
think I'm reading 5, 8, and 10 yeah. are currently districts that don't have. Is there somebody who's uh, in that region? I, I, I could come up with 5, 8, and 10, I think. Um, if somebody who is we wants to pick a corner, like, what are you guys back there, Norm? Five. You're five. So whoever's, if, if you know Mr. Norm Peterson, then you should, if you live in that district. Why doesn't everybody that's in District 5 organize back in that corner right now? Because I tell everybody that we're doing this. Yeah, 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 please do that. And then um, District 8, does, is there someone here from District 8? Okay, so the group for District 8 can meet right up front here. So that leaves uh, 10 with either this corner or that corner. Pick one. Is there anybody from 10 here? Okay. Which corner do you want? There you go. Okay. So we got 10 over there. We got five over there and eight right up in the front. If everyone who's who are in those districts, please proceed to, the, to your neutral corner. And if we could alert everyone that's in the hallway that we're doing some of that stuff. That would be wonderful. So while the districts are caucusing in an effort to gain, make some more time, yes, there's a map that our secretary has put up for us, which is nice. I'm not sure what the protocol is going to be today. Sure. Yeah, go ahead and look, see where you belong. All right, so five, eight, and ten are now district in.
Well, you know, we're making up time. Could everyone work their way back to their seats if they're not in one of the districts that has not made a decision yet? If the district has made a decision, you could come to the front with whoever your representative is. Mr. Chair? Alice, they need you to go up and announce All right, here's what's going to happen next. For each of the districts, when they've decided on who their rep is going to be, in this case, uh, Mr. Saliba, I believe, has chaired the District 10 caucus. Yeah. Who have you chosen as your representative? Uh, District 10 has selected Michael Yannick. I'm presuming the secretary has his name spelled and what he needs for that. That's important. So I think, yeah. Yeah, well, if he doesn't, let him know. Just, we we're just trying to make the job of the secretary a little bit easier because it's one of the real jobs here. Um, so it's going to the secretary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. And uh, next, tell us your name and what you're in District 8. Yep, uh, Mel is 3.12 in the 8th District. Uh, the 8th District has selected David, uh, David Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Yeah. Drop one up for the good guys. All right, we're all good guys. That's why we're in the room. So, uh, District 5, have they come to a decision, Norm? Yes. Okay. Um, would someone, could you have one of your minions, you know, whoever, whoever's working for you? And then if you could make sure the secretary has the spelling of the person's name. Uh, Larry Hammond from Southwest Affiliate District 5, uh, elected Norm Peterson. So, oh, great. All right. Hey, that, we did some real business this afternoon. Um, there are a couple other things. Um, we're going to have some time for open floor, yeah, but I want to give you a status as to where we are with the, uh, the count for delegates. This is a really difficult process. Unless someone's been around for this before, you know, we only do it every four years. I, it's one of the things we've done in the past. How many people have been here? for more than four years. Okay, so keep your hands up. So so that's a lot of new people. So for all of you folks who are brand new, you need to know that this is just one of those really complex things that we do. You know, we've got 80 names on a ballot, and it's a lot, 75, I guess, of the 80 slots. Um, so it's really important to do it right. And that process, because of the basically ranked choice type voting that we do, um, it could be kind of cumbersome. And I don't think we've come up with a better system. I've had to do it twice. Um, well, I guess this would be three. So of those people who have been here for four years or longer, how many, could, could I get your hands back up? The ones that have been done, done this for more than four years. How many have been here for more than eight years? Okay, a few, quite a few hands went down. We're getting down to a smaller number. Okay, you know, presidential elections like come every four years. So now we're going to go back to 2012. How many have been around for more than 12 years? The hands are falling. We still have quite a few. How about longer than 16 years? I'm counting. 
and I know there's a couple people who aren't in the room right at the moment, but I've got about 10 or 12 maybe left. Okay, now we're going to start sorting the wheat from the chaff. How many more than 20 years? As a, as a member of our party, more than 20 years. Now look at that list. Look, I mean, look at, look at this core right in here. Like Oakland County. That is crazy. Congratulations. These are the people who have made this party run for a long time. All right. Mr. Hubbard's back there going, Can I, when do I get to put my arm down? <laughs> All right, we're going to go a couple more here. How, mu how many more than 24 years? Oh, man. What are we down to about? About seven or eight? Okay. This is where I get off. Uh, more than 28 years. Look at that. Look at that, there's five, six. All right, more than 32 years dedicated to the Libertarian Party. Look at the same number of hands. They said nobody dropped their hands there. All right, 36 years. Wow. Okay, all right, so we lost Scotty at 36. That's, that's pretty good. All right, now we're really getting tight. Who's been in the party longer than four years? Wow. Wow. The room was pretty small back in the day. And I think the story I heard is it was in Taylor. And even though I live on the west side now, I grew up, you know, stone's throw from Taylor. And I think there's only one guy in the room that was there in Taylor. Jim, were you there at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. So was Randy. Our, one of our founders and served in three different decades, if I'm not mistaken. And the Zabla's too, no kidding. Just, just him. Like, like you two could be separated. Were you still married then? Were you already married? Were you already married when he was at that party? So this was part of the courting ritual, was to say you were a libertarian. Wow. Not many have gotten away with that, so hail to you, bud. All i got to say is, you know, these are people who have dedicated their lives to doing this. And I'm going to be off the desk here pretty soon. But I just want to say, um, I don't quite we'll care, give a rat's ass what side you're on. The only side you need to be on is liberty. And, and we need to work together. Because there's a lot more of them out there than there is us. So we got to get together and try to figure out what we need to do to put candidates out there that are going to run our game. And uh, I'm hoping that we find some more Jim Hubblers, because we need them. <laughs> I know he's kind of unique. And we need some more Scotties, but that, you know, that could be debated too. And, and my sister Claire, who's you know, was dedicated to help me run in my campaign for governor, but seems like everybody knows her. Um, she's a fun lady, and the point is, is that we need them all. We need people that understand what we're about and, and are willing to do the work, even between diaper changes, right, Brian? That's right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to tell you something that I believe to be true right now, that our team of people who are counting have 19 minutes. I'm, I've been advised that we've got 19 minutes and then we, we need to look at shutting them. The, we have a, a fast stop because there's a banquet and some other events that are going on. So we have 19 minutes of open floor. But before we go to that, I want to tell you that um, any motion that is not on the floor before 5 o'clock will not get voted on. And further, that the results of the delegates is unlikely to be had before five o'clock rolls around. So I am disappointed. I just know that they're back there counting and it's just a Herculean process. You really need a computer to make it go faster. So we're doing the best we can. And, and by the way, this is hardly the first time we've had to do that. Um, anyway, the, the, that is gonna be announced by 
the management team for the party. Um, maybe they'll have it by the you know, time we get around the banquet. Being a teller is not fun, but it is very necessary. And you know, it's like everything else. The things that get done are the things you choose to help get done. So we have 18 minutes of open floor, and I will recognize someone who goes to a microphone. <laughs> Whoever wants to go first, please introduce yourself. I know who you are. But. I think that would be the most popular motion. My name is Carl Ball from Alpena. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of Michigan legislature, or I'm sorry, the ballot drive for good time in the prison system. Um, there's a petition drive going on right now to get that on the ballot. I, I make a motion that the Libertarian Party endorse this petition drive. Can you provide some... I'm sorry. Language? I'm sorry. I know everything about it. Yeah, I don't know much about it. Can you provide some language to the Secretary? The petition drive gives prisoners, uh, for every day worth a good time, they serve... For every, every day they serve in prison, they get a good day. So, day for day. Um, I'm not sure. But day for day, so if you're in prison for a day, you get out a day early. Um, I'm raising my godfather, my godson, he's seven years old. Uh, his father, full-time dad, full-time worker, uh, had a really shitty childhood, and he matched that shitty childhood with drug abuse for years, much like I did. Um, and for that, he got a seven-year prison sentence for... Uh, Nonviolent crime, possession of methamphetamine. He had a couple priors from back when he was younger. And he's doing seven years. The good time will cut that to three and a half years. Addicts shouldn't be in prison in the first place. Okay. Nor should the mentally ill. So I'm going to, just to expedite so others can have an opportunity. Um, first of all, do I hear a second? I think I heard about 15 of them. I do have a second. Can, can we get a name? I'm sorry, I can't see very well. Who's the gentleman on the back that nodded? Uh, Jake. Okay, Jake. Just make sure the secretary has your name for the minutes. Um, resolutions require two thirds. Yes. And so to pass this, I'm going to try to do it on a voice vote. All those in favor of endorsing the ballot initiative that probably has not yet been approved by the Powers of is it so it's, it, it's already on the ballot. It's circulating. Okay, so we're going to endorse the effort to get it on the ballot. And all those in favor of that, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So I, I have the opinion that carried largely. So, um, all right. Next up, I'm just going to introduce Andrew Duke to present a proposal from the Unity Caucus. A, um, I'm sorry, resolution. All right. Can you deliver a copy to the secretary? Excuse yourself there. Okay. Uh, title of this resolution: is For Unity Within the Libertarian Party of Michigan. Also, I am Andrew Duke, Southwest Michigan. Thank you. Whereas the Libertarian Party of Michigan is committed to advancing the principles of individual liberty, personal responsibility, limited government, and inclusivity, and whereas the Libertarian Party of Michigan recognizes the importance of unity in achieving its political goals and effectively representing the interests of its members, and whereas there has been a year-long leadership dispute that has escalated to a legal case and caused a split within the Libertarian Party of Michigan, leading to further division and discord among members, and whereas it is imperative for the Libertarian Party of Michigan to come together in cooperation and mutual respect to advocate our party's principles and focus our efforts on expanding liberty for all citizens of the Great Lakes State. Therefore, be it resolved, that the Libertarian Party of Michigan reaffirmed its commitment to the principles of individual liberty, personal responsibility, limited government, and inclusivity. And the party recognizes the efforts, if not the validity, of both elected representatives involved in the dispute and does acknowledge the validity of all members, concerns, and perspectives. And the members call for an immediate cessation of hostilities and divisive actions between the leaderships 
where they focus on finding common ground and resolving differences through constructive dialogue and mediation, and the party encourages all members to actively participate in the reconciliation process and contribute towards building a stronger, unified, and more successful party. I see you. Thank you, Evan. Is it second? Um, that's a mouthful. Uh, is, uh, would someone like to speak to it or against it? Is that a resolution? Or? It's a resolution. Okay. All those, we're going to take a straight to a vote because we can. I see no opposition to, to taking a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. All right. That carries. All right. Word. Ryan Brennan, uh, Wayne County Delegation. Is this uh, technically open floor? Or is this? Very good. Uh, I've been asked by my good friend from New Hampshire uh, to rep the Emo Caucus today. The Emo Caucus, our objective is to make the liberty movement more countercultural, engage in more what they would call punk rock exercises of civil disobedience. Oh, okay. Engage in more, uh, more activism, essentially. Getting out and meeting people on the ground where they're at. Last year, I did the summer of activism, I called it. I traveled around the state and held a couple of different protests, met the, uh, the states where they're at, and we should be doing this alongside our political efforts. That's why I am standing here before you all to declare another summer of activism where we will be meeting the state exactly where they're at and doing exactly what it is we should be doing. It's not just a phase, live free or cry. King from Huron Raven. I am going to uh, make a resolution. I move to demand that the Libertarian National. A motion. Nash a motion. Oh. It's a motion. A motion. Yes. You said resolution. Okay, resolution. so a motion. Okay, uh, it's a motion. I move to demand that the Libertarian National Committee dismiss the federal trademark lawsuit against LPM members that is pending in the Eastern District of Michigan. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Second. We've got a second. Secretary set? Okay. Um, should we debate this or is it fairly self evident? Would you like to say anything more in, in favor of it or explanation or anything else? Uh, all I want to say is that we're libertarians. I think that it's absolutely ridiculous that we're using the government and the law to force an IP lawsuit against members of our own party. Yeah. Is there anyone like to speak against the motion? I would argue that it's not an IP issue. It's an issue of privacy of the members. They have granted their contact information to the Libertarian Party. That's not what the lawsuit Please says. don't interrupt the speaker. That's not germane. All right, it's understood. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak for or against? And we're going to keep this, we're not going to have 30 people do it, so find somebody who's going to make a point. I would like to speak in favor of the motion because this would be the one thing that would bring unity back to Michigan. I'll keep saying that word today. The lawsuit needs to go, and yes, this is about IP. It says right in our platform that we don't believe in IP, and what we're fighting for is the chicken on a stick, the eagle flame of liberty, whatever you want to call it. That is what we're fighting for, and that is a trademark, that is IP law, and that is what we're fighting about. And our platform says no. So I want to speak again. Okay, seeing none. Move the question, please. We're going to do that anyway. Uh, this is all about, you know, big government would kill. You know, big, this is big government stuff. You know, attack, attack, attack. Um, libertarian, mercy, forgiveness, let's move on. Okay. Let's, uh, bring us to vote. The motion on the floor is, if I understood it correctly, maybe I'm going to ask the secretary to repeat it so I don't bundle it. All right, the way I have it written, Mark, correct me if I missed anything or misstated it. 
Move to demand that the Libertarian National Committee drop the lawsuit pending against LPMI members in the eastern portion of Michigan. Dismiss is the word. Dismiss. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to vote on. And all those in favor of that resolution, please say aye. Aye. And those opposed. Yay. Okay, I'd say the ayes have it pretty broadly. So, we have an available microphone in a few more minutes. Does anyone seek recognition? How do we like our ads? We're really catching up here fast, folks. Does anyone seek recognition? Sorry, I didn't. Is there a motion to adjourn? Was it I heard a second. Okay, there is a motion on the floor to adjourn. Would anyone like to speak for or against that? We're just trying to pick the next one. It's, in fact, that's not the Thank you. Hey, I don't do this every week. Um, all those in favor of adjourning now, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Hey! Okay, yelling doesn't help. I, I don't think that passed. So we're still in business, and you have open floor, and if you wish to be recognized, Scotty, I will do so if you get to the microphone. First, a point of information. Um, if if the um, When the dele delegate tally is counted, it will be announced then after the close of business to those who are still here. I think that's reasonable. I, you're going to report to the secretary, and that's part of his responsibility. Is that, Daniel, does that work for you if you get the numbers that you'll report them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just a functional, what the tellers are doing is a lot of work. It, it may be, a, you know, they're, they're sacrificing part of their dinner hour to help make this get done. we gotta, we got to figure out a better way. Like, we well, I'll need to have some kind of device. I don't know. Who seeks their recognition? Uh, I, well, Mark might do it, maybe. The number of people here show the determination of the state party. The state party is very strong. It can be a lot stronger if we all work together, put all this bullshit behind us, and move forward. Uh, I think it's good times ahead for Michigan State Libertarian Party. Mr. Fulmer. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, so I. Today, most of you guys got stickers and buttons and all that stuff on your chair somewhere. Those are all um, compliments to the Libertarian Party Radical Caucus. Um, all of that stuff we have available, uh, templates free to download, uh, for you guys to use that as you so fit. Um, we do have our own in-house printing place that does uh, all that stuff, so if you don't have that necessary, we can, I can we put you in contact with somebody that can help you do that. And if you're interested in making the joining the Libertarian win of the Libertarian Party, talk to me about joining the Libertarian Party Radical Caucus. Thank you. Okay. Before our next speaker, I'm going to make an announcement on behalf of the convention staff. I don't know how many of you are staying for the banquet, but if you're not, there will be a box outside here. Maybe maybe we can work something up here, guys. Re reusing the lanyards and the containers for your, uh, your name and everything. Uh, having run about nine of these conventions, I can tell you this is a big cost savings if we can recycle that and have it for the next one. So if if you want to keep you want to keep your name and your delegate tab, you know, whatever, that's fine. But if you could recycle the lanyard and the plastic insert, that's a big deal for the next convention to be able to save some money. Okay? Who seeks recognition? Mark King of Huron Racing. I move to ratify and confirm that the Libertarian Party of Michigan's Executive Committee is currently comprised of the individuals who were elected to it during the April 1st, 2023 Lansing Convention. With the exception of any individuals who have resigned from or otherwise vacated their seats since that time. Okay. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Um, I move to ratify and confirm that the Libertarian Party of Michigan's Executive Committee is currently comprised of the individuals who were elected to it during the April 1st, 2023 Lansing Convention, with the exception of any individuals who have resigned from or otherwise vacated their seats since that time. I'm going to say that as a parliamentary matter, that recognition is symbolic only. Appeal the ruling of the chair. Because... Well, I'll let you do that, but let me finish. It is not within our power to replace the board at this moment. We are replacing the board. We're confirming the board. We are the membership. This delegation is making a resolution declaring what this motion is. I don't think it's within the power. Now, you guys can vote and do whatever you need to do and appeal, but let me, let me just speak to what I want to say here. There's a process for doing this. The process is we were voted by a majority of the process. I was there, okay? I, I organized that convention. I'm just not sure that the way forward is to do it this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna rule No I'm not. I'm ruling on the resolution and I'm gonna rule it out of order. Now you could go ahead and do the next thing. We already did All right, it. Now, now, please just let's do this a step at a time so we don't have we're to fight. We're running out of time. We've got time, we're fine. It's already been moved. We're not going to run out of time. So, I now have an appeal of my ruling that it's out of order. And I heard a second. So, we're going to vote as to whether or not my ruling was out of order. Is that fair? All right? So, all in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, say aye. Aye! aye. All those who wish to overturn the ruling of the chair, say aye. Aye! Okay. I, I think I've been overturned. Pretty simple. So having said that, having said that, we have a division of the floor. And we've got time to do that. So all those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the chair, please raise your hand. Can someone please assist me counting, Brian? Will you do that? Okay. So did you get counted? We well, were trying to signal there. Okay. So all those that wish to overturn the ruling of the chair that that resolution is out of order, please say aye. Or raise your hand. And was the count 28 previously? Okay, start right. in the back. One, two, three. Uh, Stephanie, four, four, five, six, seven up here. Eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. 13, Aaron, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Okay. So that original ruling is over, overturned. That means that the resolution that is presented can be voted on. The motion, the original motion. And I'm going to ask that we vote on that now. Always leave the controversies to the end. All right, so I'm going to let the secretary repeat it. That's the day. That's the date. The motion as stated is to ratify and confirm that the Libertarian Party of Michigan Executive Committee is currently comprised of the individuals who were elected to it during the April 1st, 2023 yeah. Lansing Convention with the exception of any individuals who have resigned from or otherwise vacated their seats since that time. All right, that was fun. All those in favor of the resolution as stated. Motion. Motion, thank you. The motion as stated, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Nay. 
Okay, I'm going to send for them to come. All those in favor, please raise your hands. And if we could have a couple people. Yeah, let's count ourselves starting the back. Put your hand down when you count. Two, Wendy. Somebody. Two. Stephanie. Four. Five. Six. And then up front here. Seven. All right, come up, going back this way. Eight. Pauls. Nine. Ten. Got one yeah. up here. Well. No. No. Thirty. Claire. Claire. 50. Claire is fourteen. Michael's fifteen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Where are we at? Shelly. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Okay. All those opposed, please raise, raise your hand. We'll count the same way. All right, same thing. Start all the way in the back corner over there. Same one. Two, three. Seven. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Last resolution, it's after five o'clock. Last of any last motion. The motion to suspend the rules and extend our time by 15 minutes. I will not recognize that unless I have a member of the committee here. Do we have time for that to happen? Is there a member of the committee that ran the convention? You know, I'm very sensitive to time because they may have to be out to stay on schedule for stuff. Can we get somebody from the committee? Oh, Leah's here. The, the body has a right to extend regardless. Yes, they do. You make a good point. Just understand that a lot of people put a lot of work into this. Mr. Chair? So, who's making a long time? We'll see. Jamie with Wayne County. We need, uh, we need a time extension. Time extension first. How long do we wish to extend? I already said 15 minutes. Do we have a second? Second. 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 A motion to extend uh, the adjournment for 15 minutes. All right. And we, get, we got a second. Go ahead, Jamie. We got a vote on it. Yes, I understand. Did you want to say anything about it real quick? Why we need to bother to do this? Okay, that's fine. If you just want ready to vote. I can't We'll vote to extend for 15 minutes. Let's just do the vote. All right. We have 15 minutes. All right. Do we want to add 15 minutes? Uh, and all those in favor of extending the convention for 15 minutes till 5.15, Please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. I think the ayes have it. So you're recognized, and I'll speak to whatever matter you have. You have about nine minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I motion to require the secretary to email the draft minutes from this convention to members by the end of today. That's a little harsh. Draft. I'm not sure that's possible, but... Um, you could make that motion. I'm not sure. What, and what happens if he doesn't do it? Point of information. Is there a second? I, is there a second to that motion? I do hear a second. Request for information from the secretary. Is that something that's even possible? You said to email the minutes by the end of the day. The draft. The draft minutes. Yes, please. Do you have a good draft? Is my question essentially. Okay. Send, sending it to who? To the members. To the members, okay. Um, sounds like the secretary is in cooperation. Um, I guess it's... You didn't say that, okay. All right, we're just trying to be a little accommodating here. Um, all those in favor of the resolution? Motion. God, I'm getting old. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. Yeah, 
Okay, we'll go backwards. Discussion. Okay, I wish to move to amend the motion to be by the end of business Monday. Okay. Do we? And I say that I'll stick to it because I am now a secretary of the Community Advisory Council um, that I was elected to, and I know what a pain in the butt job secretary is. It's probably the hardest job one can have on such an organization. Maybe treasurer if you got a lot of business going on. You know, okay. Cool that. All right. So I, I second the amendment. Scott All right. Jagan. All right. So now we'll vote on the amendment first, which is to change the delivery time to at the end of business on Monday, whatever that means, five o'clock. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Now we'll go to the main motion, which is that we're directing the secretary to do so by Monday at five o'clock. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay. Does anyone seek recognition? I seek recognition. I I I recommend uh, not voting for this uh, motion. Our treasurer, the man of integrity, does nothing. We already did that. That's over. Oh shit. Okay. Does anyone else seek recognition? We extended for step fifteen minutes. Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, Jim Kohler, McComb County. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much, folks.